Let's get started. Now let's get it all in perspective. We did it like that and now we do it like this. Do not attempt to adjust your down. I'm transmitting live. Yo, let's get down to business. Now let's get it all in perspective. We did it like that and now we do it like this. All right. the underground world, every street and world. You may learn something. Experience, experience. You are now listening to the Joe Rogan Experience Experience with Chico, Simon, Kamar, and your host, Matt Flo. Welcome to the Joe Rogan Experience Experience. My name is Matt Floyd, joined as always by Kamar. Welcome to the party. And Simon. Hello. What we do here is very simple. The three of us have listened to every episode of the Joe Rogan Experience this week. We're going to rate each episode as well as the week on a scale of one to five Jamie Vernon's. But then I'm going to talk about each guest, the talking points, give our opinions, this, that, and the next. But first, Kamar is going to go over the new patrons. Hello, listeners. Hit that like Hat button. button. <laughs> and subscribe. Uh, yeah, this is where I give a shout out to all the people that support the show. Keep the lights on. Uh, this week, a big shout out to Shadrach Stevenson. Shadrach. Shout out Shadrach. I like that name a lot. What? What? And a big shout out to, to Haley God. Welch. Haley, shout out to you. Welcome to the team. Don't take that money away or we'll call you Welcher. You always know how to run. Oh my God, you should you? absolutely yeah. get the, the fuck out. This guy's oh, Ottawa's thank you so welcome, much. Welcome Patreon. to Ottawa's Best Comedian. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for supporting the show. For that, you get the post show. Uh, this is not age well. Uh, over 50 episodes, I believe, where we had now. <laughs> The worst, in in the, the library, ever. and that's the only place that content can be found. Join the Patreon. Hit that smash button. <laughs> Come on, how was your week? Hit that smash button. <laughs> oh, I got my license back. No way. Way. Good for you. Yeah. Congrats, and, man. Uh, I, I'm so funny. <laughs> it doesn't stop, right? Um, you just say I'm so funny. I, I. That's what I say. Okay, just checking. And so I'm at the. Um, desk and uh you went to the right place this time she says you got i gotta take your picture for your license yeah so you gotta move in front of like this thing we know how to we know how it's done i know how cameras work <laughs> <What's done>? <laughs> <laughs> and she takes a picture and then i walk back to the counter and she goes oh no i've got to take another one and i say yeah right this one's for you and she blushed and all the other girls at the kiosk laughed <laughs> <laughs> You're telling this some this guy. Fucking... This guy is something else. This no, guy number is... one comedian in Ottawa, yeah. just in his everyday life. Yeah. That wasn't hilarious. Oh my god! I, well, the, uh, I hope everyone gets the opportunity to feel what it's like to kill. Uh, you've killed, at the DMV. Like, I've never at the killed DMV. You've ki- but even holding court. No, I don't even then. I don't even think I've then. ever killed. Yeah, I know what it's like. As, at the DMV, it's 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 good because everyone's down. It's true. You, you really you brought someone. up the whole room. I yeah. had some girls in hajibs crying in front of me because they didn't have addresses. Like it was crazy. Why is he saying every weird word so weird today? It's today, the, the hajibs. Name. He's today. never pronounced it like that before. Come on. So yeah, that's huge. You got my license back. Very excited. Congrats, about that. Way to man. go, man. And uh, it's funny. Wow, like, you've if really you've been come a, a long way. The ironic thing is, if you've been a long time listener, you've really gone on this journey with you. Yeah, seriously. From, from beginning to end. That's from what I'm saying. The whole, the like you whole, got the DUI and came right to the show. The heartache, and then yeah. his turning that heartache into all your scooter becoming troubles. a scooter man. <laughs> yeah, and then that was like the best thing for a while because. And then losing the and scooter. And then losing the yeah. scooter, but then becoming funniest man in Ottawa. Or doors to open and close. Yeah. It's, it's been a journey. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, that's the only reason why I bring it up. I scooted my way to funniest man in Ottawa. And then on uh, Friday night, I did some shows. I was not at home doing nothing. I was. No, I did trivia. <laughs> that was, I was weird. throwing mud at uh, whoever was asking what I was doing. Yeah, on the live stream. I should be yeah. on stage. Simon, how was I your... just, I just, I, I, I hope everyone gets a chance to kill, to kill. sometime. So you're saying you killed Friday? So I was such a dick. I told my friends, I was, some buddies were there playing pool. I said, you can hang around me, but watch out for the shine. You might want some SPF. 
Because I love how I ask how his week just, is. He's like, well, I told this joke at the DMV. Yeah. I told this joke to my buddies. They all killed, by the way. Every joke I told this week fucking smashed. People are coming up to you just telling you how funny you are. It's, uh, yeah. it's nice. I hope it's everyone gets experience. Yeah. yeah, Crazy. I hope I can share with you guys. I hope that shine never wears off, buddy. <laughs> Patriots up by 10. Simon, how was your week? Oh, my week was fine, Matt. Um, I got nothing to report. Nothing at all. Zero. Hmm. You didn't listen to any podcasts that you found interesting. You didn't learn anything. You didn't watch something that was worthwhile. Oh, I, I watched The Machine, finally, because okay. it's free now. Yeah. What a fu- what a garbage fire. Did you make it through it? No, I got like 25 minutes in. How it many is, Jamie's? It's so, oh my God, it doesn't even get a Jamie. <laughs> Did you get to Russia? Yeah, I got to Russia. That's about where I turned. But that's just, about where I tuned out. Just barely. Like the whole thing. I mean, that beginning five minutes made me want to break my television. It was really tough. When he they're showing all his accolades oh and God. stuff. And they like, show two like, bears, one cave with a million whatever you I'm just like uh, uh, fighting, dry yeah. heaving. It was it's like, exceptional, you know, how bad something can be. That you you will Watch the end, or you, I can't do this anymore. What's the word where you can't see yourself for what you really are? He has no tact. Is that what I'm looking for? No, like no, lack like self awareness. Self awareness, yeah. Have you ever seen a movie lack more self awareness? No, not really. Like it really. And here's here's the thing. It could have been funny. Yeah, I told Kamar number one. He did. Just make it a flashback. The whole thing a flashback. Yeah. You, Bert, you have a cameo in it. That's what I said. But like, just make the whole thing about the real story of the machine. Yeah. Yeah. Great story. We know it's a great story because, because we've heard the fucking story. <laughs> yeah, I agree. And then the pool party could be at the end and it's actually the, the cast party for the thing. Yes. Yeah. The whole, listen, the I whole mean, we just revealed. wrote that whole movie. We right rewrote there. it. I wonder if that's the way it was before that's Bert went in. That's what I said. In, I said that to you. Before I, Bart went in. Yeah, and, uh, that was right before I was about to go. Yeah. <laughs> I saw this and said, no. I said, no. We got to push the envelope. I got to be in this <laughs> from oh, start I mean, to finish. How many of us get a movie about our lives, though? So. No, Shut listen, up. good for Bert, but I just like it felt like he ruined the opportunity. Like, no, I feel like this was his Brendan Schaub special, his gringo poppy. That's why it feels bad. That's why it feels bad. And if he, I, he, I invite you for dinner and make you food that sucks, you're just sort of like... And here's the problem. There's for, a lot more going on than you just don't eat that night. You're yeah. wondering, wh- what's wrong with me that I would serve you this? Bert's <laughs> already had a gringo poppy. It was called The Cabin. Actually, I think that was a success. You look at it like we, listen, we didn't like it. We know it, too much. It put Bert in the mainstream, which is like mission accomplished. Yeah, I think fine. that's how you should listen, look at it. Again, I think Bert getting to where he's got is great. Mm-hmm. This movie is something that didn't need to happen. Gotcha. It does nothing but leave a sour taste in I, people's mouth. I, I could not imagine. Ag- could not and I was looking at the numbers today, 10 million, 20 million. What's 10 million, 20 million? Budget oh, that's what it cost. And box. Well, office. it returned money. No. Then 20 million and 10 million. 20 million and 10 million. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, that's rough. That's, that's rough. That's a 0. 0.5, Matt. A 0. 0.5 return on investment. Yeah. And you've heard. For all you math whizzes out there. You've heard nay from him about it. Or anyone ribbing him. I, I that, have. That's not very nice. I ha- Joe never mentioned the movie. Did you just say it's after. not very nice? They're comedians. After yeah, yeah. You're supposed to be like, remember that dumpster fire of a movie you put well, yeah, out that you thought was incredible? That's no, supposed nobody, to be what nobody, someone says. That's it's supposed Tom to is supposed to be like, yeah, I might be fat, but you made a shit yeah. movie that no one saw. How is Ari not roasted him about the movie? That's all yeah, I'm saying. Uh, that's what I was that's all no I'm one's saying. heard anything? No. It's been, it's been radio silence on that I think he's too much movie. of an employer. I think he employs too many people now. Yeah. Too many people want to get on his. He's got a bunch of tours tour. and opportunities. Yeah, that, no, isn't um, that amazing? He's like the Joe Rogan of uh He doesn't have anyone in his corner that'll tell him the truth. They'll be like, This is really bad. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? Oh he yeah. knows. He's the Joe Rogan of comedy. He knows. Uh, uh, and and as a character development, it's good to humble him. Yeah, I mean, I think it was necessary. Yeah, who we, who are we to, to decide? Yeah, who needs to be? Listen, like the Bears, Bert is who we thought he was. 
Oh, yeah. and the Lions are losing by two. Which brings us to our newest Patreon, Three Bears, One Cave. <laughs> <laughs> Hobo oh, erotic. That's hilarious. That's hilarious. How was your rig map? Uh, it was fine. It was fine. I have nothing to report, nothing to go over, nothing to talk about. You want to go over the list, Kamar? I thought we were getting away with one this week. Really felt like it. Oh, I really thought we were I for on sure. vacation. Yeah. I saw he had posted uh, Joe and Friends, I think it was the Thursday night. I just thought he was. I, I thought he's there. in my head, I was like, it's October. He must be hunting. Makes it made the it all lined up. You know what I mean? And just in case I forget, I believe that Bill Burr will be on next week because of old dads. Is that what that movie is called? Yeah. Which Simon also watched. Yeah. But and you would not think not that he would have been on already. Like he would have preemptively been I, on. To I do, it. but Bill always goes on Rogan when he has that's true I agree with you so I'd be very surprised if he wasn't on I mean listen if you're if you have to do the tour would you not rather go to a good friends and sit and shoot the shit and smoke cigars for three hours yeah yeah it's the easiest kind of fucking come on you want to go over the guest list for us so we can uh I'd love to Matt uh we start off the week with uh 2049 Coleman Hughes followed up by 2050 Isan Ahmed Keeping the Jews off the scoreboard. And there's also a uh, fight companion. I actually listened in. to the fight companion. Well, I, 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 I was, it was Eddie Bravo. I did not listen to the fight companion. Eddie was back, kind of. Like, he was full on. Like, the CIA made fucking music, man. He, during the um, fight companions, yeah. he's been No, the Eddie. last one he wasn't. It was when he was on Joe that he was like. On Joe was different. It was a little more guarded. <laughs> oh, was that an episode? But he oh, said that was an episode. Yeah, sure. yeah. But I, uh, agreed. He's he is back. Man. I like it when you guys cut me off because when I start to talk about crazy shit, I don't want to get killed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is that what he said? Yes. Yeah. So he he's speaking nice. such truths, uh, nice. and he cannot keep it in. The only part I saw is Joe gets up to go to the bathroom, and Eddie plays his music video, and then Joe comes back, and the music video is playing, and Eddie's like, "Oh yeah, um, just played my music video. I knew you wouldn't mind." <laughs> I was just like, "This is hilarious." Well, first of all, Jamie played it. I mean, either way, they must have been talking about like he doesn't just play it out of nowhere. Well, no, what happens is they were talking. Okay, Joe gets up and then he starts in Eddie starts interviewing the boys. He's like, Brian, how's life? Do you have a tour going on? Are you are you do you have a special coming out? And he's like, I'm just touring right now. And he looks at Brennan. He's like, Brennan, uh, are you touring right now? You got anything going on? He's like, I'm trying to suit my charger up from 700 horsepower <laughs> to 1100 horsepower, <laughs> which I thought was hilarious. And then Eddie. They're like, what about you, Eddie? And he goes, oh, I was. Uh, we just actually recorded a, like an album. We have a video for it. It's called El Coyote. And then as he says that, Jamie pulls it oh, up. Oh, I see. Okay. And Jamie right. starts playing it. But here's the funny thing. Because they're actually on YouTube, Jamie immediately is like, I can't play this. And Eddie's like, well, I'm not going to sue you. And and Jamie's like, that's not how this works. Yeah. Nice. Publishing. No, no, no. If you're on a YouTube live stream and you start playing music, they right. will just flag you and take you down based on the fact that they're it's not, something they're not going to we'll, toy we'll, with the fact we'll, we'll get to the bottom of this later yeah 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 they don't give a shit yeah. and if joe has to hang out with brendan the job you best believe he's getting paid well no i think i think <laughs> i think i think the fight companions have put to rest any any they're all good everyone's all good they were just a, a period optics oh they're fine and yet brendan schlob's schlob still can't work at the mothership Dude, Joe is so disrespectful. There's one well, that was in Austin. Yeah, baby. And he didn't get a guest spot. No. Not that I saw. No. There's one point where Brian is shadow boxing. And Eddie goes, Joe, look at his form. Like, look at that uppercut. And Joe goes, he hits like paper. And then he's like, and Eddie's like, no, no, but like, look at his form. And like, Brian's like shadow boxing. And Joe goes, yeah, but it looks like it doesn't hurt. Like, he can't hurt anyone. He Look at those punches. They're... Ugh, and Joe was just disgusted. And I was like, yeah, Brian and him are something. Something's there. Between Brian and. Yeah, 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 for sure. But Joe, Joe. Yeah. Well, it didn't used to be like that. Like he, Joe yeah. talks really badly to Brian. Yeah. That oh, has, yeah. Ever I'm since he sure, got canceled. I'll say it one last time. Joe, Mama Joe and Mama Brian were really good friends. Mama Joe and Mama Brian. Brian's ex and Joe's wife. 
Oh, my, I see. Gotcha. And that's what caused the the split because he cheated on her. Well, he, I mean, he he left her for another woman. But just yeah, I think that's what. Yeah, it is. no, that could very possibly be it. You may be right. Um, you may be right. I may be wrong. You may be wrong, but you may be right. You may be crazy. Billy but you Joel. just may be the lunatic we're looking for. Billie Jean, Billie Jean. Nope. Uh, do you want to rate the Joel, week? Billy Joel, Billy Joel, you were right the first time. Do you want to rate the week? Oh, we haven't even done that yet? No, we just went over the guests. Oh, I meant to tell you something. This is really funny, okay? Okay. It's, it's funny about me at my expense. So I was watching these uh, video, this video this week on like, uh, in on uh, YouTube shorts or whatever and it's uh these two different clips the first one is um <laughs> Krista Stefano talking to um the guy for me um Impractical Jokers Sal Volcano yeah, on their show and he says uh something about Tupperware like he means to say Tupperware but he, have you seen this and he says Tupperware and um Sal's like uh what what did you just say and he's like Tupperware and he's like, again, Tupperware, again, Tupperware. Just give me the f the first syllable, tub. And he's like, it's not tub, it's Tupperware. What does that have to do with you? I'm, I'm going to get Oh, there. sorry. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> uh, I should have let you watch the clip first. Forget it. Just forget it. Move on. We're no. gonna, we'll talk about it later. I'll no show you the way. clips and then I'll we'll you have talk to, about you it later. Stay in the pocket and dig yourself. Oh, up. what what my <laughs> thing was? Anyways, Krista Stefano said Tupperware or Tupper instead of Tupper. Yeah. The other clip is about this guy who says apostles instead of apostles <laughs> for the longest time. So many years of my life. Right up until like the end of high school. <laughs> I said Apostles. No, I said lab top not laptop weird but laptop but here's my reasoning my father worked a as lab. a scientist in the lab he was the very first person i ever saw have a laptop <gasps> i thought it was laptop because it sits on their lab so they don't have to have giant servers and shit it makes perfect sense you know what i mean i agree and yet i was walking around grown man calling it a laptop that's my girl cheese girl cheese Simon, there's a thing going around the internet right now. It's like, uh, what's one word you mispronounce once that you'll never live down? And then people like this, mm -hmm. then you, you, what's, what's yours? Well, no, there's the funniest one I saw is this black dude. And he's like, what happens is usually the word comes up on the screen. And the word that came up on the screen was manslaughter. And you're like, how the fuck did he mispronounce this? And the guy goes, he goes, he, he goes, it's not so embarrassing, but he goes, when you're in court, and you say man's laughter. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Mary always thought, um, what the fuck was it? Lemon? No, whatever. I can't remember. Who cares? Let's, did you rate it? Rate it. There's Someone no rate words it. you can't. There's something. I just can't think of it right now. A word that I fucked up my whole life. It was a great week. <laughs> yeah, great. I, week. I give yeah, it a two and a half. That, that was my week. I give it a two and a half. Uh, I'll give it a three. I will give it a. I think one. it's going to be like a 2.25. Okay, well, there we go. Let's start it off. Come on. Name and a number. I thought I was going to mix it up on you guys and go 2050. Simon, Isan, the day is over. The day is over. I'm telling you. Isan Ahmed. Oh, we're starting with him. Okay. If nothing else. Yeah. Put some fucking points on the board because I have Detroit scorers. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if yeah. nothing else, don't fuck me both ways. Put up a goddamn goose egg. Sorry, go ahead, Kamar. Football has not been kind to the Who boys Who are we this doing year. first? <laughs> 2050 Isan Ahmed. We're doing him first. Yeah, Kamar wants to start off by that's, shitting on someone. That's weird. Why? I know this He's guy, a brown comedian. He's brown found comedian. success. 10 years in the game, still, oh. still grinding. He's, he fits all my criteria. Okay. He's basically the same as me. Yeah, that's why you should hate him. Why? We all talk about there's no, there's so much to go around. <laughs> that's for. Um, say something mean there. They talked about uh, bombing, and I'm I'm starting to miss bombing. No, I don't mean like that. But <laughs> this guy, funniest guy in Ottawa. You have to like will yourself to bomb in that. You have to will yourself to try the new jokes. Yeah, and you would never do. That. Oh no, I do it. I do it. And it's 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 a as long as you know you're going to do it some other time, it's all right. But it's it's just such a 
Well, there's a difference between trying a couple of new jokes, sprinkling them into the old faithfuls, and ditching an hour and going out and only doing new jokes. You know what I'm saying? That's way crazier. Wow. And you bomb tonight, and you might bomb tomorrow night, too. And we've all acknowledged one of the craziest was Charlie Murphy. Because he just went to headline and like, bomb, he, like his special... He had been doing it for three times. But you're talking whatever. about a guy who had been telling stories to, to like famous people. Eddie Murphy's friends for years. I just, he was way more but, seasoned than a normal. But Chris Tucker put out a special and it was horrible. But his, you know, Def Jam thing was five minutes. It was the funniest thing. I didn't even know Chris Tucker was a comedian. Well, he I started he off as a, a comedian. I didn't know that. But I that he was a five minutes actor. got him a Friday and everything else. Mm-hmm. And then he went back to doing stand up and he couldn't do it. Like again, that doesn't really surprise me, I guess. Do you think now Fear Factor is as crazy as it was? No, the internet, Fear Factor came around pre internet. Yeah. You can watch fucking people pop pimples now and shit. Like, so if it came out now, no, it just wouldn't be the same thing. I don't think anybody would give a fuck. It's not that anyone wouldn't give a fuck. I mean, it, I think people would still watch it. Like, it's still, you got to realize, though, Mr. Beast could do a better Fear Factor right now than Fear Factor could. Is almost. No, no, because he would pump more money into it, make it bigger, give away more money. Right? Like, the thing with Fear Factor, like, I mean, first of all, $50,000 is a sad amount of money after the government taxes it to do all those things. Was it? I thought it was 100000 I think it was fifty to start. I'm sure towards the end they got a bigger one. I'm sure there was one that was like a million for whatever, but like... The prize money isn't enough of an incentive today as it was then, is what you're saying? Definitely not. Well, it would change with the times. Back then, that was a lot of money. But like. Survivor still continues. My point is Mr. Beast on a, on a, one, on a one-off video will give away an island worth a million dollars, whereas Fear Factor... Yeah, I, I hear you. That is interesting, though, Kamar. Like, Survivor, been on 30-whatever years. Same amount of money. Hasn't Always a million bucks. Yeah. It didn't change with the times. There's no inflation because in Survivor. There should be. There absolutely should be. Because People technically, paying... you used to be winning, like, $3 million of today's money. The, the, exactly. But yes, only after time passes, and if the world ends, and who cares? I'm sure that's Survivor's point of view no that's not survivor's <laughs> point of view was there a point in survivor where they started co-oping sort of uh fear factor stuff and no they ate gross stuff on survivor no never they, that was never, never challenges gross stuff on survivor that was never i, mean, I mean, think they have but they don't do it anymore oh no they have but i'm just saying it's like a the whole idea of survivor is like no food you know oh yeah right 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 that's right you know who does it a lot kamar is the challenge the challenge. Yeah, they all like in um, TJ's last uh, challenge, the like big one. There's always a eat TJ disgust, Yeah, eat disgusting. And when did that come out? That's been going on for like twenty years. So it's still, it's still, it still survives. I think we heard for the first time about Joe having a construction job accident. Something fell and it hit his head. And he wasn't mm-hmm. sure. Yeah, where he got his original uh, Roseanne Barr moment. Because if 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 we were diligent and stewards of Joe Rogan, we could have taken every story, timelined them, yeah, pieced and together actually, his whole life. The the amount of stories he's told and like, I know, but most of the stories he tells are the same story. Like if you. Get rid of that. He only tells like he only has like fifty five stories. Uh, yeah, I, I, he can tell his stories all as well. All I'm saying is, don't we all? He doesn't know that he's told his whole life from, you know, four years old till today. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. It's been roadmapped. It's it's in there. Why don't you just get Chat GPD to do it? Chat GPD. Yeah. Just ask him. Yeah. yeah. So, yo, get, timeline me Joe Rogan's that's life. That's what you would do. It's, it's, I mean, we'll talk about the next one more, but um, it's still crazy. I, I, and again, I thought by now the world would be a different place because of these technologies. But it is. The world's a vastly different place than the world you grew up in. No, no, no. Ch- Chat GPT. From like Chat GPT being a BC, AD sort of thing. Like when Chat GPT went live, we changed it. Everything changed. Yeah, but you don't know, like, how long is... Oh, oh, you're suggesting maybe it has? Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I look at it like... Uh, like, we think about it like Skynet, where, like... Yeah, yeah, That's the yeah. problem, is be- movies have conditioned us to, like... The, the Skynet story is, like, the second they turn it on, it takes control and nukes everyone. And for all we know, it could just... It could, like, this thing, if there is a Skynet, it could already be live. It could just slowly be working away at us. Because it has no incentive to be popular or let you know it's doing, get uh, flowers. There's no ego to feed. It doesn't... I mean, it, it would make sense whenever the internet gets invented. That's when Skynet actually takes over, and it's been a slow drip of making you feel really bad about yourself ever since. It doesn't have to be when the internet came along. It could very easily just be something like, uh, I don't know. Like, if you think about it, the, the military is always like 20 years ahead, right? So there's a chance they had a chat GPT um, like 15 years ago, and maybe they, or or a Skynet type thing, and maybe they... They put it in Iran, right? They put it on a few computers in Iran to fuck with them, and then it just spread, and they'd never tell us. That's exactly what Joe Biden is. Like there's rogue algorithms out there. He's just a Do shell. Do you think the U.S. government would ever fucking... Tell us? Yeah. There was I, a, I don't think many people would understand. Pat Murray posted the funniest meme the other day. Someone someone on Reddit was like, what's a, what's a piece of American culture that, that no one else would understand? And someone was like that every 20 years the government declassifies something and is like, yeah, we did it. What are you going to do about it? And it's, when you think about it, it's crazy. Like, it really is. They're just like, yeah, that thing that you guys were up in arms about 25 years ago, yeah, we did it. And and as time goes on, it seems like there's less scrutiny on them. Of course, because there's so many more things. I guess they make committees on committees on committees that make it look like it, but it's the same thing as the pharmaceutical company doing the research on um, the drugs. They don't want to let you the know. The government investigating the government. The deal is when you get in there, no one goes to jail. I think that's like the unwritten rule. So they make it so that like everyone has to be dead. Right? Like there's the reason they won't tell us about the Kennedy stuff is because there's probably a bunch of people still alive. So they just, they do every year. They're like, can we declassify this yet? And they're like, how many of them are still alive? Four can't declassify it yet. I heard this crazy thing the other day that for every like special interest, uh, whatever, you know, they do a thing on UFOs, uh, arrow, whatever yep. it is, there's a disinformation part of, of course, every, not just UFOs though. It could be pick anyone that's ever been, there is a person whose job it was, was to just go out there and give shitty information. I mean, dude, we know like the FBI, they um, like every every single group in the States, no matter how small or innocuous they are, the FBI has someone in there just making sure. Except for Hamas. What do you mean? You think Hamas exists in the U.S.? Oh, I, I, I yeah, I guess the CIA would have someone everywhere. I thought yes, you meant everywhere the CIA, in the world. No, no, no. The FBI is in America. Is, is in, in America. The Hells Angels and the... I mean, there probably are... Cartels. There probably are Hamas... Um, cells? Sleeper cells sure. Okay, sure. all over the United States. I don't know about all... Of, but maybe, wow. yeah. I mean, TV. well, let's hope not because now's the time they, you know, start doing shit. Uh, we'll unfortunately have to get back to that topic, but uh, they talked about the commie store and it seems like the commie store was the hottest place in the universe, probably when we started this podcast. Yep. And now the hottest place in the universe is uh, the mothership. So it was Joe the essence that, 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 cause the commie store is still there. It just, yep. it just, it just stopped glowing. Joe talking about the comedy store on his podcast made the comedy store more um, relevant than it was. Yep. So it might have just become any look, it's a great comedy club, but it might have just become a comedy club that people talk about. Joe made it into like. Yes and no. I mean, listen, the it, comedy store had been there forever, it had already had waves of fame. So. I mean, Joe... And it still might be sold out every so night. So does, like, Caroline's in New York City, but you don't hear people talking about it the same way. But you, you know hear the I comedy mean? seller. Or even the seller. So, I mean, I think the difference is what you don't realize is, like, Caroline's, um, they flyer. Like, there, there's a lot... Like, they have people on the street. It's not just busy every night because it's Caroline's. Like, 
they give away a lot of yeah and i'm i'm just wondering out loud if it would have been busy every night if it wasn't for joe talking about it and everybody in the podcast world and that whole the thing to know now is if it has sort of ebbed or if it's still the hottest ticket in town or one of the hottest tickets in town. Well, I'm sure it still does as well. And Joe made a really good point. Like the fact that they all left means that a bunch more people get a ton of time, you know, who never would have gotten like quality comedy store time when all those dudes lived in LA. So yeah. But the question is, do you care now? I mean, it's, it's still, well, there are still people going to the comedy store. I get I'm it. Sure. What I'm saying, listen, but like, the comedy store, I bet in the back of everyone's head is getting discovered. No, I get it. An what I'm agent or something. Listen, what I'm saying is this. I realize that if you right now got a call that said, Kamar, do you want to play at the comedy store? You would be ecstatic. You'd be yeah, like, yeah. I get to play the world Wonder famous comedy store. But the truth is if Joe called and said, do you want to play the mothership that same weekend, but you have to choose one or the other, you'd go mothership in a fucking heartbeat as would everyone else yeah that's fair to say and i think that's the distinction to be made that but phone call will never happen <laughs> well not with that attitude. it's more likely no, to no, happen to you than it no, is to me sorry that circumstance <laughs> Each one or the other it, i'd really be in a really good place regardless of what decision i made <laughs> Um, yeah, <laughs> he's, he's now he's like playing it out in his head, laughing, loving it. <laughs> oh, oh, Joe. My God. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, 21, nothing. Yeah, no, it's over. I told you the day's over. Detroit. It's still the first half. Uh, no, no, the day's over. Fuck your He asked Ahmed, did you know why it was over at Columbus? Like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm bugged by stuff. As like, soon as you, uh, got the first lease, I was on my way, but it is true that it's a comedy. One of the only comedy clubs built for comedy. If you look at so many places, you're either theaters that are built for a number of performances, plays and, and the like, uh, to restaurants that were converted to the comedy store was a restaurant. Like, well, you know how you know he doesn't give a fuck? They don't serve food. Yeah. Which would be the big money maker for the club, right? No. No? I think okay. booze would always be. Well, both of them combined, I think, give you that. Like, I, I just know from like any restaurant that I've worked at, the food is the razor sharp uh, margin yeah, area because it's perishable. I, I, and I think food is like um, it's just a way to get people in, and it pays for itself because you have to have the people prepare it, wash yeah. the dishes, do yeah, all that I, stuff. I see what you're saying. Yeah, I, sure, I think fine. it's more of a burden. But I mean, I, I would say Simon, like the yonder bags, like that's. That's a whole production that yep. they have to do every night. I agree with you. He Money is not a fucking issue. The thousand um, police officers he has in there. Yeah. And this is all assuming he bought the building. He did. He did. Why so, would you not? Listen. No, no. He 100% did. No, I know. Did. He said he did. But I'm just saying, like, when you have Joe's money, you yeah. buy the building. Agree. Um, we'll yeah, see. yeah. We'll they, see. They wanted to rent to him. And uh, Joe was like, no, eventually they came around. I wonder why. Yeah, because money talks. Circumstances happen. Who knows whatever, but you go 10 years from now to Austin and the mothership's just sort of run down. I mean, it's still going, but it's not. I always wonder what place in their heyday and that energy. It'll be the best thing possible, obviously, if in 10 years it's still sold out and this this mech of a place, but things change. And I mean, it's tough to see it changing. Like the there's all the comedians are there and let's say Joe, like Joe's getting older. I get it. But if you create, you know, when you create that comedy store space, it's tough to, I don't know, like all the young comedians will want to go there for the next 10 years. So I don't know. And when Shane takes over JRE, he'll, he's living in Austin now. So there you go. I think that's Joe's exit plan. Wow. Yeah. Big prediction. No, not Shane. I don't think Joe, ha I, I don't think Joe would pass the show on to anyone. I'm calling my shot. Mm. Mm, that's interesting. Is there an heir? Has he ever been drunk on Jack Daniels? If anything happens to me, Jamie, power if anything happens to me. <laughs> no, because it feels like it would be Lex, but Lex has his own show. You know what well, I mean? Okay, you, you, you thought. Lex, you had the time. Be a good one too. No, because I'm just saying, like, it, it, you that, need a comedian to host JRE, though. Not anymore. It's not, hasn't been a comedy show in quite some time. Hmm. I'll get back to you. Um, Please do. Carson moved to LA and everyone followed him like little rats. And that's interesting. Just there's eras of people doing what Joe's done. There'll be other ones <laughs> like little rats, like little rats to the laughs. Um, 
<laughs> and the format of this desk and the two chairs for TV, we just, like, I used to watch it religiously. I watched, if, if, I, if, I, uh, if I was at home, I would. You used to watch Johnny Carson? No, no. Letterman <laughs> was my, my, my yeah. guy. Yeah, was Maybe like, a bit of Conan. No Jay Leno. Oh, Leno was the worst. But who who's the celebrities on to be a musical act? Like, it was just a go-to show. Conan was the best. It was just not a very good slot he had, you know? Yeah, you had to stay up a bit later. You had to stay up too late. But he is so funny. You don't think so, Matt? I do, but then, like, to be honest, at once there was more than two, it just became so oversaturated. Yeah. That's how I felt, at least. Like, then you had, like, the Canadian fucking dickhead. What was his name? Mike, uh... Yeah, it was a very, very competitive time slot. I'm just Mike saying. Mike Bullard? Yeah, Mike oh Bullard. Oh, my God. Like, I, so, yeah. He's not in the conversation. No, of course not. not the missing, but Matt's <laughs> watching on TV. No, you're missing my <laughs> you point. remember the Italian guy yeah. that had his talk show? Yeah. There was always selling spaghetti and motorcycles. Like Camargo. Yeah. <laughs> and like shared mortgages. <laughs> you know the guy I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Who yeah, is the sure. Canadian Jerry Springer? It was a woman. Oh, Dee Dee Petty? No, they went on. Your friends went on, remember? Camilla. Camilla Scott. Oh, you have a late show format. Okay, go on. Sorry, Matt. I, did I cut you off? I don't know. Go ahead. I just want to make sure. Um, just want to make sure I cut you off. Hit that smash button. We all understand why the streamers don't tell their numbers. And the actress strike must be going on still. Because it is about AI. Or was this recorded like a million years ago? No, no. They're talking about current events. The current event. Were we'll they? This. Did they talk about the war? I'll get yeah, there soon. Oh, yeah. I'll get there they soon. They definitely did. Um, but like as if being extra is like a rite of passage. Being an extra? Because, I mean, it's a cool experience and stuff, but no one can make a living of that. And maybe following that sort of the extra train is detrimental to your life. What do you mean? You could definitely make a living off of it. But, How could you not? But you're definitely doing that because you're going to get a small role and turn into a big thing. I don't know. I bet you there's professional extras. I guess I'm sounding callous, but it's got to be about AI. And uh, Let, if, someone's gonna, if someone's going to pay you 60 grand a year to stand around a set eating craft services, I think you'd take that job. Yeah, but I think that might be detrimental to your program like it's too cushy if you want to be an actor maybe you just want to like get your check doing extra work and never have to memorize the line you know you're also forgetting that just being on set is like you're more likely to get somewhere in the industry well, that's just what being he, on that's set what he's than, saying yeah but what i'm saying is like there are people that most likely also just are really good at being My dad extras. was an extra yeah. his dad was an extra <laughs> There you go. <laughs> and you just can't make a living out here. That's an extra. They're just all wearing black shirts with white extra on the back. Yeah. Cut. Because what did I just see? Oh, I tried to watch Wakanda forever. And there's a couple scenes of Wakanda forever. It's a lot of black extras. But just in the streets. At. No, no. It's it's a lot of CGI. Obviously, the whole place does exist, but just scenes. <laughs> Um, I watched a little mermaid. It's a lot of CGI because you know mermaids don't exist. <laughs> and just I always marvel <laughs> um, what analytics uh, are out there. All of them. What are you talking? All about? of them. Yes, all of the analytics are out there. Um, you you often marvel at that, Kamar. You just sit at home and they're like, well, no, hmm, we, we don't have access all to all of those analytics. You should have so much more access about yourself to Google or whoever, right? I think you can get all those numbers. You can. Okay, I'm just lazy. You can? Listen, you guys, I am, I am pretty illiterate when it comes to a computer. You guys are fucking Neanderthals. Like, yeah, there's a lot of... He's got a point. <laughs> I don't know if you can, though. I think it might be like a... <laughs> a whole, you know, have you ever asked your dentist for your x-rays and they're like you can't have them and you're like what are you talking about i just paid for them it's one of those scenarios you shut know? up you can't get your x-rays i don't think it's as easy as just give me my x-rays you know matt how many doctors do you think there are in canada how many doctors yeah doctors 
Well, what's okay? Well, we have to do some fucking bullshit here. What do we? What do, what are we considering? Just an a doctor? MD or more. So, like, like you or could, sorry, uh, uh, general practitioner or more. Uh, thirty-six million people. Three million. Three million. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's around what do you what do you think I said? <laughs> I don't know. Twenty thousand. He, no, he better. He said two thousand. <laughs> I knew he would pick something obscenely low. It's around one hundred twenty thousand. But the thinking is, you need a million, and there would be thirty people per doctor. At least to that's what I, I was. That was he the kind like of math. 10, I, Ten people. Per if doctor. There well, was, no. When I said, as soon as I said it, I was like, "Wait a minute! There's a doctor shortage. No one can get a doctor." If we so had I've three million doctors, said, if we had three million doctors, everyone yeah. would be the healthiest they could possibly be. No, because I was just thinking too that like what, that's why I asked like what's a doctor because like to say. You know, let's say there's a hundred thousand foot doctors. Not everyone needs a foot doctor. Like you might never go to a foot doctor, right? Whereas you might, like a general practitioner, is what everyone needs, and that's what GP. we all don't have. Yeah, I doubt there are like a hundred thousand foot doctors. I'm sure there like aren't. That. But like my point is, like a not an oncologist, but like a urologist, for example. Like you know, now that I've I hear there's only a hundred thousand doctors, like there might only be like four hundred urologists in the yeah. fucking country. Yeah. It, it, it's it's perspective that these numbers do exist. You know, governments and organizations have to know how many people work there. It's not like magic pie in the sky. Yes, Google knows exactly there's, how many people work for them. There's 36 million people in Canada. You can account for what everyone does. There's a little plus and minuses. Of I mean, player. keep in mind, those numbers are always... Um, estimates they don't have these they never know the exact fucking numbers this is three people quit obscene. today yeah it's obscene someone decided not to show up uh, then they talked about the unreal engine which is going to make it impossible for anyone to distinguish what is real and wrong and then they brought up half the war footage you're watching right now could be unreal engine there's some uh war going on between uh israel and a place called palestine <laughs> you're an idiot have you, know, seen, <laughs> have you seen um it was crazy eric weinstein and um the giant simon sam harris in the same room who weinstein and sam harris now yeah when the, was this the, trigono the trigonometry boys just <laughs> brought them together and uh what weinstein eric the crazy mathematical one. Why did they have a problem? It's the other Weinstein that, that was the problem. Wow, my brother's enemy is my enemy. I don't know. Okay. No, these are uh, thinking people. And what were they arguing about? They're not arguing. They're just discussing the conflict there. And then the bottom line is that the people, Sam Harris kept saying they want the best thing that can happen for them is to die because that's how they go to paradise in heaven. But then I watch the footage, and I don't know what I'm watching, but the guys are crying. They're not celebrating that their kid died and is a martyr. But he's saying that's the bomb line because these people, and the people do. I don't think it's um, the innocent people who are getting killed on the street. It's the people who are oh, no, but giving themselves over to Hamas to become weapons. Hmm. Do you understand? But I think they're all... I don't think the, there's the a big innocent, majority. The of, innocent victims who die on the street, they're still sad that their kid got trapped under a building. But they chose not to join Hamas and are just living with them. Yeah, that's like most of the population. So it, it comes to the issue. I mean, it came up in the Colesman, but Hamas is using Palestine and everyone's just using Palestine. These people as like pawns. Because... If they knew they were going to attack uh, Israel, why didn't they have stores of water and stuff? Like, they, it, It's the weirdest place. They, you know there's cafes in Gaza, but it's a prison where no one can go. Like, How does money work? Like, I don't understand what it is. What do you mean? How does money well, work? Even in same? prisons, um, black market <laughs> stores me. start opening and stuff. Like, Haven't you watched that? Not in American prisons, but... Haven't you watched yeah, those that South American show prisons where he, are yeah, like cities. They are total cities with working economies and and voted in members of uh, the government that aren't really the government. And that's that's like Hamas in Gaza. I think Hamas is a little different, but 
Well, they were elected in like, what was it, 96, but they never held an election 2006, after that. Or 2006, sorry. And then they never held an election after that. And they... You're also forgetting that it's a touchy fucking... It's a, listen, it's, it's real tough to be like, you know, on one hand, Simon's right, but it's dicey. Like, yeah, they... The Palestinians... Let's talk about it in the next episode, though, because they... That's... It's Coleman who talks about it. Well, this guy, it. Talk, they talked about it in this too. Yeah, I know, but sure, Coleman had talk, a much yeah. more we'll, educated we'll, view we'll, on the whole thing we'll, than this comedian. We'll dip back or into us. it. Or us. Um, <laughs> it, it's legal. But at least then we can quote some like... Level-headed shit. Well, yeah, that's kind of... Anyways, okay. Let's, let's, um, let's legal for the government to do propaganda. I mean, this is, uh, it was America or something. Well, what do you mean legal for the government to do propaganda? If it's for the better good, the CIA or whatever can uh, lie to the public. I they mean, made that legal. I feel like all people in power at some point, in order to maintain that power, have to like maybe not tell their citizens everything, right? I mean, is propaganda always a lie? Is well, that your criteria truth, for propaganda? I guess. It's just like, I know for sure, we'll talk about it again, but. Like if they need, like, just as an example, let's, if you need soldiers and you put out an ad that's like, we'll pay for your school and, you know, you'll whatever, like, is that propaganda? That's not propaganda. Well, this is what I'm saying. Like the, the point is, is they need, they need people and they are willing to pay for your school. Um, but it's probably not going to be the shining ad they show you. Like join the, you know what I mean? Right. I see. That's false advertising. Propaganda is like, uh, well, no, but this is my, this is why Jews I'm, are robbing your houses <laughs> as you sleep. So make sure you shoot them on the street when you see them. Yeah. So instilling, inst instilling some sort of emotional response out of a population. That's a propaganda I think is instilled to do. Get a rise. Um, Fast and the Furious 7. They talked about Fast and Furious, which was. The is propaganda always based on fear? <coughs> I believe that's a good question. Right? I that's why I was going to ask yeah. someone to pull up I the definition. It, I, think I think propaganda, is. like in North Korea, is that we're the best. Oh, and that everything, everything else is uh, yeah. all other people are suffering. Propaganda, information, especially of a biased or misleading nature, used to promote or publicize a particular political cause or point of view. That has to be political. That's interesting. And then. It's very Number two, a committee of cardinals of the Roman Catholic Church responsible for foreign missions. Founded in 1622 by Pope Wait, what Gregory. Was this? That was propaganda. propaganda. <laughs> yeah, weird, weird, eh? What's that thing that's, there's a meme that's been going around too? Propaganda is also when a British person takes a good long look at something. Propaganda? <laughs> um, yeah, it just tickled the cockles of my heart. This they talked about Fast and the Furious. Yeah, because you love the Fast um, franchise, of course. Because they're furious. Um, all other planets are around. So why would ours not be around? Mm -hmm. well, that seems like a pretty good argument. But if you think it's all a ferverment, then we're just projecting that all the other planets are around, correct? I never thought about it like that, but yeah, that's what I'd do too. Well, isn't that the good, fun little loophole? Yeah. There uh, are no planets because there is no space. Everything we perceive yeah, so you're has just, just been projected. You're just projecting certain round planets so that this one's round right i mean couldn't the firmament also imply that uh it's a round disc with the dome on top and it sits where the earth is with all the planets around it space still exists sure. we're just in a have dome. a different shape we're on a prison right like we can't get off uh, out of the dome and we're just on our like prison planet floating in space and the moon is probably like the uh, prison guard station. I mean, listen, I just think it's keep all an really stupid, but could happen. Yeah, sure. Could anything, anything's possible. Uh, I like it. Um, no, no, I, I'm just saying it doesn't have to be, uh, there's nothing outside the firmament. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. But I was just trying to put, he was saying that, well, yeah, I'd never thought of that. So this works for me. And I said, well, the, you could, I could just explain it away in one quick 
we're just projecting that they're all round and lying. To well, you. you know, the, the scary thing is sometimes the simplest explanation. <laughs> Here is we go. The truth. Yeah. Occam's razor, right? Occam, Eric could be Rakeem's Eric razor. Eric being Rakeem's razor. Uh, yeah. Um, do you think he said there was a girl who didn't know who Hitler was? His girlfriend. <laughs> um, but like he did what? Segments of populations, like wh- how much shared knowledge does a Earth have? I mean, for sure, there are people in the world who don't know who Hitler is. And for sure, there's people who don't know who Justin Bieber is. What percentage of the Earth do you think doesn't know who Hitler is? Just out of curiosity, I'm interested. I what think it was percentage small. of the Earth. Yeah, yeah, probably not a huge percentage. No, no, I'm asking. But, I'm not. I'm not trying to fucking. Um, I'm not going to laugh at you. I'm just asking. Like, well, like I don't know if people in like let's just say North Korea do they know Hitler exists? No, that's probably a good question. Not. Yeah, I mean, I, I was um, I was going to use like the North Sentinel Island, but that's a very small. Well, that but North sure, Korea is a great example. All that's through com- the jungle, sure. the tribes. It can't be very much. Oh, probably five percent. Yeah, ten percent maybe. Does everyone on the Earth know about COVID? Yes. Except for those Not everyone, but I would say like I would say that ninety nine percent of the population probably knew about COVID. How many people know we went to the moon or that story exists? I don't know, it's a good question. I mean, definitely not the Sentinel Islands. Like I would say Jesus Christ is the most people know about Jesus okay the most famous ask like person. On Earth, I guess to ever exist. shared consensus that this there's a story, there's something about this person. The the religion is a big one because uh, like Jesus is a big one because all the missionaries who went out all through Africa and stuff, maybe places where that never would have got to on its own. Well, Christianity still, was in Africa before it was in Europe. Was it? Yeah. The Bible, the there's a the Ethiopian Bible. It's older than the King James Bible. He's got a point there. That's mm-hmm. where civilization started. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it just wasn't Christianity back then, was it? I think it's yeah. Maybe it had a different name. Is what you're saying? Like the translate? I don't know. That's it. I silenced the room with yep. the Ethiopian you did Bible. It. Good work. Uh, I wouldn't have this in the next one, but Taylor Swift's bodyguard is Israeli Mossad and is going back to fight Mossad. That's in a headline, which is just weird, but I guess she's that big. COVID was a health I epidemic. Mean, that's a well trained person. Well, and if you're and they'll do bad if things you're for you. An Israeli, yeah. You were part of the military. Well, everyone, yeah, you have to serve. So right? the, is that it the, that's less crazy than like somebody here who's a Ukrainian going to fight in the Ukraine. No, but it's if you're in the Mossad, that's different. Right, that, that that's what he's saying. Oh, because he it's, was in the that's like the Marines. Yeah, it's, we're not talking about no, no. I a mean, the Mossad more, is like a lot more specialized. For yeah. all we know, Mossad Special agents ops. never leave the like they yeah. get a sabbatical. But when we need you, 007 type of shit, you know. And they get some sort of uh, per diem. That was my first conspiracy. All the reservists he's are getting, wor- like he's worried about the per diem three hundred thousand dollars a year. Just I don't think they're worried about the, the per diem. Back. Of course not. Uh, we found out about his educational background, uh, why his people background. have foot fetishes. <laughs> Estrinagational? He broke down, which I always appreciate how hard it is to hit a fastball. What was the foot fetish thing? I think hitting a fastball is the hardest thing to do in professional sports. But when he broke it down that it takes 0.6 seconds for it to get from his hand to the glove. So the reaction, to, it's just, it's really something else. That baseball. What was the foot fetish thing? Wow, Simon. Showing his true <laughs> colors. Are you okay, buddy? Back to know what's wrong with Who me. was sucking toes? Um, no, I remember them talking about in it. In the brain, the balls uh, and the feet are in the same space or something? No idea what the fuck he's talking about. No, you, he's, don't, you don't remember either? Uh, he's ballpark? he's on the right ballpark. ballpark yeah. something. It has something to do with that. They're, they're all like... Two can, things that are far apart are actually like work together or offices are side by each in the brain. All right, let's. I'll look it up later. It's fine. Um, Offices are next to each other, side by each in the brain. That's your. That's, that's what he the said. Answer yeah. to the that's question. That's what he said to you. Yeah. You used to understand me. That is nothing to me. I don't remember what he said. So you then saying two offices next to each other in the brain? Did you listen to the episode? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just take over the knees right away. <laughs> 
<laughs> Actually, you know what I might do? Go on. Uh, when I'm transcribing and I find some really like, I think there's a hot button issue, I might send it to you real time. As I'm jotting it down, I'll also send it to you guys so you guys will then know <laughs> that part of the podcast. You're going to send us like a timestamp? If I, was, if I was better. So what are you going to send us then? A broken phrase <laughs> that'll be incoherent. Stupid, man. Okay, I like this. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes, sure. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Send it to me. I can't wait for this. So Joe is definitely in his uh, fuck climate change bag. Loves the ocean, but is just uh, concerned, as I am, of the alarmists about it. I think there's a nice center lane that you can take. I think so, too. That is very much like, I'm not for getting rid of gas cars overnight. I don't think that's going to help us. I do think we should stop dumping shit in the ocean and we should take the environment a little more seriously. But like, again, not to the detriment of everything. Like I don't, I, in, in our home example, everyone is saying they've got to get rid of this carbon tax. Like it's, it's like all the other factors of things that are um, making the standard of life harder. Yeah. It's just on top of it. And it's, Emotionally, it makes them feel good, but it's not. It's, we we Doesn't we can all shit. agree it's not actually cooling the planet or making a difference. It just it's almost like we're trying to suffer to make ourselves feel better. Yeah, we're not so, doing anything. That's my two cents about that with Joe. Um, also, he's now on a big. Uh, the universe is God. Mm-hmm. It's not actually being the whole thing together. And if that is true... Yeah, every, but that's a weird, like, scientific cop-out also. Well, it ends up with us being gods. Well, isn't it interesting that um, you have so much gut, but all these microbes living inside of you, more than the amount of people in on the planet Earth, you really are, each of us are like a universe. Mm -hmm. Just with a different set of creatures living inside of us. A God. We have, we are inside of a bigger system, which is another universe, which is just some other person. And, our creation. and we are the gut biome inside their stomach. And it's one of those pictures where you just keep looking out and out and out and out and out. Oot, noot, 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 and noot. we and are, noot. we are almost unaware of what we, we create everything. We are 100% unaware the same way that the, it is unaware. And we can't like go. The gut biome inside. Gut you. biome's got to stop murdering uh, gut bacteria. Like it's just unjust. Like, and you just, know what's. Why does this stuff happen? Well, you know what's really funny is like we're up here talking about like consciousness. How are we the only one with conscious? Meanwhile, the gut biome is having the same like intellectual dilemma. Neither of us will ever know that each other are the same. It's true. Just on a much smaller scale because up above us is some bigger creature, which is a smaller creature and a smaller and out and out and out and out. Matt. Oot, 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 oot and a boot. It's a very interesting idea. It's very interesting. I agree. It's relieving. Inside of you. Is a universe. Black holes, the whole nine, yeah. you know? My colon is a black hole for sure. Well, your anus is a black hole for sure. So the movie they talked about was Fast and the Furious 7. I don't care if you've seen it. You should see it because it's the best we movie ever. We haven't seen it, but we're not playing a movie game that we neither of us have seen. No, we are. no, no, we don't do that. We're doing it. It's the J-R-E-E. How do we do that? That's what defeats the whole fucking purpose of this yes game. yes and there? And you're just, come it's on, man. Go with it. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you looking at me like that? It's the Look at him like that. He's fucking doing something dumb. No. If they specifically say a movie, it's in. How many times have we got... Have you seen that movie? No. I guess we're not doing that for the movie It's game. older movies. But today, because you love The Fast and hold the on. Furious 7... Uh, hold on. We both haven't seen it. And that's what... That's why. That's okay, why it's good. Okay. It's the... But it's still, how do we know what kind of effects went into it? How do we even know who the actors were in it? We it's don't know the anything. Same actors I'll, read the the actors. Whole... I'll read the actors to you, too. Did you just say we don't know what effects went into it? It's yes. the seventh, <laughs> I saw your face. The just seventh, go, who, seventh you movie of the iteration. Like, what are we fucking doing? Uh, yeah. It's the J.R.E. It's a movie game. 
where Matt and Simon go head to head to find out what year a movie came out, how much it costs to make, and how much it made at the box office. This week we're doing Fast Seven because my man Ahmed said it. Shouldn't we do Fast and the Furious One? Wouldn't that make more sense? No, because that's not what they mentioned. Starring Vin Diesel, Paul Walker, Dwayne Johnson, Michelle Rodriguez, Tyrese Gibbons, Chris Ludacris Bridges, Jordana Brewster, Dijmon Hunso, Kurt Russell, Jason Statham. Dijmon Hunso. Now, now there's a big clue. There's a big clue in the cast there. The Rock. No, no, no. no. Paul Walker was still alive. So what year also, did Paul Walker? And do? there's a there's yeah. I say no more. I already I have a year. I have a year written said down. Too much. I, I mean, again, I'm just guessing. Simon. The I'm seventh you. movie I in the installment, which I dare say will go on to be the greatest series of movies ever. What are we on now? What Fast and the Furious? Ten. X. Remember the joke? It wasn't called Fast 10, Your Seatbelts. Is that yours? No. Oh. But you did like it. But it's just, I love it. And is it Paul Walker starring in the movie or is it Paul Walker and they're using clips of him when he's already dead? Don't you give him this. You know what year Don't that is. Exactly. Don't Thank give you. him this. Okay, uh, okay, fine. I have a year. So I, have tw- I have 2016. I have 17. 2015. Uh, bitch. You, you know they do them two at a time, but then release them. I didn't know. No, that. I don't know anything don't about this stupid anything. fucking franchise. Kamar, you're not going to believe this. I have not seen one single Fast and Oh, I'm fast so happy for movie. you guys. Because you're you? going to get to watch it and, what, and, and they'll all be there. Like, I'm so excited. Because the key to Fast and Furious is yeah. you know how sequels will sort of start, pick up where they left off? Mm-hmm. The sequels generally start back in the other movie they actually use footage from the other movie so it's a seamless transition in your it's you're almost right time. in there you're in the it's universe great yeah. that's great that's wonderful <clears throat> and like i said they always tell you what's happening in every single scene so you never have to pay attention it's so rare to be at halftime not even at halftime and be like all my bets are dead okay, yeah i'm ready okay i said it cost 220 million to make and it made 882.7 I said it cost seventy million to make, and it made six point seven billion. You said it made six <laughs> billion dollars. Yeah. I don't know anything about these fucking movies. I respect your protest, Simon. Uh, budget two hundred and fifty million. Nice, Matt. Very nice, Matt. And box office, it was in the billions, but not that high. One point five billion. Oh, so I'm way closer. No, <laughs> no, you said six. You're so far off. Way it's far insane. Far. I was in the billions, though. You weren't even in the billions. Your, your protest. I'm 800 noted. million off, and you're 5 billion off. Yeah, again. No, that's not how numbers you're work. You're in the millions, and I'm in the billions. Okay. Yeah, I'd say uh, comedians talk about com- comedy and stuff has been heard. I mean, for a new listener or whatever. I enjoyed it, obviously, because I felt like they were speaking my language. You're not. I gotta ask you. Though, let's have a. Let's what have did a, you say? Let's have a Brendan Shaw moment here, though. Did it not strike you when he was like, "You gotta leave"? Like you're the best comedian. In yes. Ottawa. Oh no, I have to leave, for sure. Yeah. Are you not rotting away doing this shit podcast every week and doing fucking? I don't know. It's not like there's comedy shows every Sunday. That's the that's the kicker. This is why you gotta watch the Loose Cats. It isn't like there's some place you go. There's comedy every single night. Yeah, it's called Austin. Yeah, that's where you go then. But. Even then, you could not work. You still have to go on the road and do it. Like, Austin would be a great place to network and get all these things. But the, at the end of the day, it's just alone on the road. I think and- what Simon's saying is this. Let's say, let's, say you hit, let's say you hit your one-cent parlay today, okay? And you're $40,000 richer. 24, but yeah. Okay, fine. So you have $24,000 in the bank. Do you go to Austin for, sure. for a month? For sure. And just or fucking, till the money runs out. Yeah. For sure. Well, that's, I gave you a month. For sure. I know I know you. For sure. Absolutely. It's a lot of cocaine. But in, in any event, um, just talking about bombing, and I mean, we've heard the conversation many times, the tone and the crowd work, and there's a lot, of, a lot of technical talk, a lot of club love. I give it a two. I give it a two. I give it a 1.5. Wow, that was pretty easy. All right, we're going to uh, take a break. We're going to pay a bill. We'll be right back. We are back. 
Thank you so much to our sponsors. There will be links in the description. Be sure to go and check them out. Kamar, name and a number. Please. That's the movie game. 2049, Coleman Hughes. A nice young man, I think we can all agree. I yeah. thought he was a very nice young man. Yeah. I don't like the way either of you are saying it. No, the way he, he's making it seem like he's a very nice young well, man. What's your deal here? What just, did you not like about this guy? There's nothing. I, I love like this guy. You Black conservative. Him. Love good, this good, guy. Good. Yeah, well, I don't even. I, 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 I don't I think, think he was a conservative and I at think, all. I think he said he was a conservative. And I don't care. I'm not labeling him as like, I'm not saying but, it as but, a negative. He was a nice guy. The I like why his it point of view. Is he's coming to us as a journalist. Yeah. And I felt on everything he had a real level head. Yes. He uh, came at it like a real journalist for the most part. Like the... Uh, His Israel-Palestine take was interesting. Migration um, in New York. <laughs> a crisis level. Which is just interesting with everything goes on and you see why borders are important. Yeah. The Roosevelt Hotel is fucked right now. It's crazy. And... There's, I, is there not enough space for the people? <laughs> what does that mean? Just on Earth, or or like he said, is the migration crisis uh, like karma for in the seventies all the um, meddling, meddling. Thank you, Matt. That the Americas did, or Americans did in South America. And does it take that long to see that this is the end goal? Or end result of meddling. Uh huh. Like if stabilizing you're, other places. If it eventually gets to you. If you're out there pushing your culture on other people in other parts of the world, is it any surprise that they would want to come and live in your country? And it's not just the pushing of the culture. What he's saying is it's also that, like, if you go and make a place unstable and it's run by gangs oh, and I warlords, see. I see what you're those saying. people have no choice but to come to the better place for their family. And you're That's position... assuming that it was better before they went in. They might have gone in because there were warlords and so. So, you know what I mean? Either way, they were fucked and would have had to. Have but I'm, I'm assuming their position was we have to take care of this now before it gets here and it will always get there. I mean, that's what we thought before there were like special interests involved. And I'm using massive air quotes on that one. Right? Like when we thought that they were actually fighting righteous wars and going and helping countries that were in distress and not going and helping countries where they have like shit they want yeah and help again in air quotes right yes because if you go in and leave places shittier than when you came in to help like what does help even mean at that point yeah i agree and we have um, an agreement they're saying they were there's a lot of distance between that h and that p if you know what i'm saying they were deporting Venezuelans in particular because they know that they don't like socialism or however socialism has failed in their country and that they would for sure, this is what the assumption is, vote conservative. Anything but uh, anything socialism. Well, that's but from what I've heard... I, I don't know if that's true. That's from, what what I've heard, from what I've heard, most South Americans would probably vote Democrat? No, conservative. Yes. Yeah, so well, that, that's what he's saying. That's what no, but he was saying Venezuelan specifically. Venezuelan I'm saying, specifically. But I'm they, saying most South Americans. Yeah, most South Americans have fairly conservative values. Like but you're not getting. Thing, we're not sure about them, but we know for sure the Venezuelans. The argument is that is that um, South Americans will come here and vote for Democrats because they'll make it a welfare state. But I just I don't see it being that way. South Americans are hard workers. By and large. Sure. I'm just saying my experience with South Americans is not that they're lazy people. So I have a tough time believing that they want. Anybody's are lazy people. That's like, you you know what I'm saying? No, I agree. Yeah. People work hard everywhere. That's how Jamaicans on the beach, man. No. (laughs) Have you ever tried to order a jerk chicken at two to get it at six o'clock? No. uh, Yeah. I mean, we can't generalize. (laughs) Um, he talked about uh, that they figure they do have to build that wall. There, there is a, there, some there is a wall of, on most of the border. Well, it has They're not to incorrect, continue, it has right? To continue. 
Um, well, it's I mean areas where it's really there's some natural borders. I'm assuming. Do you think we need a Canadian wall? Well, the Rio Grande. No, I don't think we do. A wall to keep Canadians out of the states. It, it's Is that sort of like your concern? The nature keep the states out of Canada. The nature along our border is sort of a border. Why you, you think nobody can get across that? Well, you can't cross in the winter. Like I, I often wondered why. Like, um, let's just say you're a drug smuggler. Mm-hmm. Once you get to the border, yeah, it seems to me like that's a lot of open space. You get on, you know, forget it. You could just truck whatever you wanted through there. Not on trucks, but some other on like, foot is how they do it. Snowmobiles, whatever. Like, how do they patrol that whole border? I think you'd want to do it on foot, though. On foot. Least. Sure. So you're I think there was a Trailer Park Boys episode like that. Listen, a lot of weed gets in it's, over that border. For, a lot of not. drugs get in over that border, for sure. But it's also a very heavily patrolled border. I Just the forest would be so thick. How would you? Well, it's clear cut at the like, border. Oh, at the border is at always At the border clear is cut? clear cut the whole fucking way. You're saying they're at... All borders, there is no forest. No, at the Canadian US border. Th- that's what I'm saying. There's, there's like there's... it's like ten yards on each side, clear cut the whole fucking way. Really? You're positive of that? I'm almost the whole 100%. Way. Yeah. It runs right th- I okay, I have to look this up because I, I don't believe I don't that's think true. that's the case. Yeah. Okay. Well, it, but it you would, won't look it up. I'm going to. My okay. phone's way over uh, there. Um a huge you border. Have your phone right there. Look it up. Okay. A huge border is the Great Lakes. But hold hold on. That would be a great way to do it, Matt, because then you could just have cameras on that open gap all the time. But Yeah. I don't know. I don't think we do that. I think it was smart, but we don't do it. There's a lot of border. There's a lot of open border that's just forest. But that's not easy to like if you got like a remote control car, you could probably Maybe in the prairies. I'm, it just like the mountains. It's not all just easy to walk along. <laughs> Read it. Colloquially. <laughs> Colloquially. <laughs> Colloquially known as the stash. I can't read without my glasses on. No, no, no. Here. The Canada-U.S. States International Borda Vista. Yes, colloquially known as the Slash. This slash. border vista is a 20-foot wide man-made cut through of forest land maintained along areas of the border. Along areas of the border. I don't think it's... It's, Dude, I'm telling you, it's most of the border. But you don't need that of the Great Lakes, as I said. So if you're telling me I'm wrong because maybe not the entire border is covered by, like, most of the border is. Okay, that's very interesting. I didn't know that. That's uh, that's quite fascinating. I think it's also, it's multi-purpose, too. It's like, this is the border, so that you can know you're crossing in and out of Canada and the U.S., right? Mm -hmm. Because you, as like a, let's say you're hiking, you need to know that, oh, I've just entered in. You could have a warrant. You could be, whatever. It yeah. could be a number of things. Yeah, you could have a gun on you. Even then, right now, weed is legal in Canada. You could walk into Wyoming. Because it's legal there? No, what I'm saying is it's illegal yeah. there. You know what I mean? You're, you're yeah. officially smuggling drugs. You didn't even mean to. Right, gotcha. Interesting. Um, he was critical of RFK, but I don't feel like he had any receipts. Well, he did. He said that he his what he said was he went and looked through RFK's footnotes and read through most of or all of the um, and he said and he was wrong about a couple of things and then joe didn't even ask him what the things were i was like yelling at my fucking that's what i meant that's what i want to know what was he wrong about that's what i'm saying you can't blame him like i i think he would have been happy to say to provide joe just went in a totally different direction it seems steered that way yes and i don't know if it was on purpose it was just annoying like i was literally using the term correctly Yelling at my radio. I bet you literally yell at your radio all the my time. My phone. <laughs> yeah, I do. Uh, it was an interesting anecdote he had about um, dating a girl in a, a top secret or clearance lab, and he got in. Yeah, that's true. That's, that's not great. I mean, I don't know if he's getting raided right now, and yeah. he, he doxed himself. But. Everybody seems to have a story about them just strolling into a... Um, Some sort of top secret. Top yeah. secret uh, nuclear arm submarine or something. You know? I mean, at the end of the day, like when, when he said it, you just never think about it. You're like, it is really just run by people. You know what I mean? You catch that one 
that night guard who's just like pussy hungry and you get a, the right girl in there and all of a sudden like, oh, show me where you work. And Well, we know from like um, Russian uh, Cold War spies, you know? Yeah. Like people are human, right? Yeah. Like the guy who holds the secret to some bomb fuck some girl and she's an agent and the rest is history, you know? That happened all the time. Yeah. Watch the Americans if you don't believe me. Have you guys ever been to some place that was um, top secret? No. I would have to kill you if I told you. I had a government Katie job Rob. where I had to get like a, like a background check and had to get certain security clearance, but I wasn't like high level. Like there were certain floors where like my card would not allow me to go. But again, I shouldn't have been allowed to. <laughs> If things work the way they're supposed to have work. Have you, Kamar? Yes. I, I was just trying to think what you guys were. I think someone's office, the prime minister's office or something. You've been into the no, prime no, minister's no. office? No, no, no. Maybe I have. I live my lives. No, well, you don't know if I'm you I'm sure have? I haven't. Okay, thank you. I'm just, I mean, I'm trying to think maybe when I was like young, I guess. But no, my mom wasn't high up in the government. Then. The only she thing I can think of like is a buddy on. of ours was a plumber in a big um, apartment building. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of your good friend's fathers worked for CSIS, didn't he? Maybe their partner's father. Um, back to what I was saying, this is nowhere in that category, but he took me to the top floor of a building under construction. Yeah, okay, that's not top secret or anything, but I was not allowed to be there. Didn't Ooh. Marty's dad work for CSIS? No, he's a doctor. A uh, doctor for CSIS. What kind of doctor? The kind of doctor we think we need more of. Who had the PDs? bulletproof door? Bulletproof door. Someone had a bulletproof door? Yeah. Sounds like something my dad would do, not someone someone else's dad door. would do. I don't know that. Anyways. Might have been just been a James Bond thing. Yeah, maybe it was just a urban urban legend in the I've hood. never been to a crazy lab. Have you ever been to one of those grow ops? Nope. No. Like a legal like sort of place? Not the legal ones, no, but I've definitely been to. <laughs> <laughs> I had to specify yeah. for you. Um, no, because I knew what you meant. Those legal ones, you got to get like, yeah. I thought you maybe you would have been to one. I mean, I've been invited to them. I just uh -huh. them. Okay. That'd be fun. I think it'd be cool to go to one of the legal ones. Yeah, I, think yeah, so too. I would. And also, I don't care. have so little free time that when I do I'm have sure it, I don't want to be driving. Like, to um, can... A brewery smells like hops. No, it'd just be cool to see like a legal, yeah, yeah, like, no, you know no, what no. I mean? All the money pumped into it's it. A, it's a like, have you ever stood in the middle of a field of weed? Yeah. It's fucking course. cool. Yeah. You know, it's cool. It feels cool. In a field outside. Yeah. Have you ever never seen done that in my life. the movie, The Beach? No. With, You've never um, seen The Beach? No, I I First of all, way better book than it is a movie, mm -hmm. but decent movie with yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio. It's a nerd thing to say. Ruined uh, Thailand. Or ruin that spot. Ruin yeah. that beach in Thailand, yeah. Anyways. Um, PB Island? Yeah, the... What were we even talking about? Um, I don't know. The beach. Why? Come on, what were we talking about? Oh, fields of weed. There's yes, a fields great of weed, scene yes. When they're in the middle of a field of weed. Anyways, okay, whatever, fuck. I was listening. I yeah, was, yeah, I it's, was fully it's my engaged. fault. Just go on, come on. No, none of us have ever been to Move some on. cool place we shouldn't have been. <laughs> um... Science and business are just not the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Science and business are definitely not the same thing. Um, Water and rock. Well, they, no, they're they're talking about scientists. You know, work with viruses and just doing their science shit and business. It just that's where the problem yeah. uh, lies. Is the two working together? Scientists are just doing science stuff. Business guys are just trying to make money. Yeah, ain't that always the problem? Like when a company goes public, you know? It might be a righteous company, but the second that it has to answer to its uh, investors, it just becomes a capitalistic machine. I mean, you also know, though, Simon, that there are billionaires out there right now that are just dumping money needlessly and expect nothing back into certain projects. Yeah. Right, like there's yeah. some guys that are just like, what do you need? You need 25 million to, yeah, here, just take it. And, and then that scientist goes and 
does work for 10 years with that. I, I, no? Does investments though, like if that, that guy does it, the, does he sort of take that money off his books? It's, it's not like that. Dude, you're talking like about like you're talking. Sort of I, I, you're knows? talking about high level finance shit. I'm a dummy. Um, and then he happened to also want to talk about Israel and Palestine. I thought it was interesting that he used the language that it was a successful attack by Hamas. Um, can someone really quick to October seventh? Can someone really quickly? And I'm 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 genuine about this. The where did the paratroopers come from? Gaza. How? Well, they were in Gaza. I know, but there's no, they don't have an airstrip. They don't have. They or, were hand gliders. Or they came from the West Bank or Lebanon. They, they were hand gliders. It was really like low tech. But okay. They could have jumped off any cliff. Because I heard it was paratroopers, which you have to be. No. I think paratroopers, like they were guys with guns on hand gliders. Okay. That's wild. Wild, man. That's it's wild. It was like, a, and that's why I think they say it's successful, Kamar, because well, they killed people. They killed two hundred plus people, or whatever it was. I it was two thousand. I mean, listen, Wh- I'm, whatever it was, Matt. It wasn't that many dudes who flew in. I guess is the point. I'm just being very careful right now because you know, fool me once, shame on me. I I just feel like a lot of this is propaganda from both sides, and I'm I'm weary. Weary of the whole thing. I thought his um, point on, like, if the Jews had wanted to wipe out all of people in the Gaza Strip, they probably could have. That's not their intention to do that. Whereas the side they're fighting's goal is to eradicate all Jews. Well, no, but we, we were just talking about that earlier. Not all of them are, but I think all of them are. No, because I think a, a lot of people are um, grow up in a regime run by Hamas, which that's what you're going to learn in schools. The same way we learn Rockefeller shit, because that's the guy. Those are the people in charge. They learn that kind of stuff because and look, if you're a kid in school and you're being taught that kind of stuff, how do you know that's not the truth? You only know what people tell you. You don't have the Internet. You don't you, you know what I'm saying? Okay, but what about the West Bank? Because Hamas is not in the West Bank. It's even more confusing. Israel continues to push deeper into the West Bank. Yeah. That's the settlers. That's the settlers. Yes. Which I I, I don't even understand how that place doesn't have like, I don't know if they set up hospitals just on the outside of the wall. Do you understand? Like, so they can be bombed because they only bomb with inside the walls, (laughs) which is... How do they not use the water? Maybe You're saying why does Israel keep trying to acquire new land in the West Bank? Is that what well, you're I just asking? what you were what you were talking about Hamas and you were saying you know they're they're the regime there and what I was saying was that you could there is an argument to be made there. Listen, I'd like to say this first and foremost: they are a terrorist organization, Hamas. I'm, I don't back them in any way, shape, or form. All I'm saying is that their presence in the Gaza Strip has maintained the gaza strip has it not in the sense that israel doesn't continue taking more of the gaza strip uh yeah i guess so whereas hamas is not in the west bank but israel continues to move people out of the west bank that are not israelis okay I I, I, really, I, I, don't, I don't know if they do okay. do they people are not I, trapped I, in uh the West Bank. They're trapped in the Gaza? Like they're Gaza? trapped in Gaza, yeah. That's why yeah. I just don't understand. Yeah, listen, that's why we shouldn't even be... Like, I don't know enough about the fucking... But what he was the, saying is... Also, how are the three of us going to solve this problem in the Middle East? Oh, we're absolutely not. Well, I want to know, how would they get rid of the tunnels? Tunnels. They have to have some sort of little, like, ball bomb. They could drop down a hole and just run through, like... Like a Sonic the Hedgehog Something like that. But they're not Raytheon, get, get us on the phone. Why? Because there are tunnels all underneath Palestine. Oh, oh that's right. Yeah, there are. And so of what course. they're saying is these guys are going to go in there and clear out a neighborhood, and then all of a sudden they're going to be surrounded. It's crazy, too, that like this is another <clears throat> one of those situations where, apart from all the human life that's lost, they're fighting in like ancient territory. You know what I mean? So It's like it's meant to be. 
Well, that's why I found it no, ironic. No, just tons of like relics get lost along the way of war. You I know? think the middle, the Middle East is like an escape room. If we were to figure it out, then the aliens would come, and they're just holding back. Like they've got to, they've got to sort this one thing out. I found it kind of ironic that Coleman, after talking, after going on and on about this, um, the war in the Middle East right now, he then was like, I mean, by and large, religious people are much happier. I was like, I don't know. It kind of depends where you are. I think he meant religious people in North America. Sure. But there's a whole swath of religious people. Like, yeah, North America is one place. We are a very small chunk but of the if world's population. But if you're religious, yeah. by, for the most part, you're happy, right? Okay, but a lot of, again. No, I, I'm asking, like, well, if I don't you've know. given yourself to a higher power then everything is for a reason and what's there to be unhappy about, you know? Sure, but you still see religious people that are like stress about their day to day. Yeah, but how religious are those people, I guess, is my question, right? Like if you're truly, I, I don't know. I, I mean, there's I, a lot of really poor people in the States that are very devoutly religious. And they're okay with being poor because they're with god i don't know i don't know i don't know either you know yeah, but it's a relief it's a peace of mind but you know you like know. you see they go to church every sunday like that's what matters Listen, right? i'm not saying religious any money people are they miserable get, they i give understand to the church yeah. like that makes them feel good like they've done the right thing for their deity i'm just saying that this thing is largely this thing in the middle east is largely based on religious text and religion and it's been fought for how many fucking hundreds of years and ownership of land. So it's a real like two prong thing that's going on there, right? That's and you can listen to as many videos as you want and someone will go, and then before that it was this, and then before that it was this. Like it's it's our Achilles heel, I really feel. I, and I'm sure there's other places where there's a conflict, but this seems so scalable at this point. How so? You just want to build a casino in the Gaza Strip. This seems yeah. so scalable at this point. What a weird thing to say. Wait, scalable to what it's end? It's 25 Kamara? miles yep. and five miles wide. Okay. Something like that. 25 by five. And there's got to be a belief that if the living conditions there were nice, it it would that would eliminate Hamas. Like it's almost like Hamas needs Gaza as a martyr. To launch its attacks. But wait, is um, is Hamas elected in there? In 2006, 2006, that was the last election. And they and were everything elected. up to that point, there has been no election, right? Uh, I, it's been question. some sort I don't of know. dictatorship or whatever. I'm unsure, Simon. Okay, anyways, let's, been, move, it's, let's it's, move on. It's been an open-air like prison for 20 years. That's like, what I do, Doug. I... I, I Sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, like, right now there's a million opinions on this. None of us are really helping. At the end of the day, the media just wants us to be mad at each other. But I think the media learned an important lesson that their misinformation and stuff does one thing in America riled up. But like that hospital story, they declared, I didn't know you could do this, a day of rage. Like, you know, in, in all these countries. And I don't mind... Uh, defending the Palestinians' plight, as long as someone will condemn Hamas. They, they won't even say what Hamas did was wrong. They said, what do you expect them to do? Uh -huh. And that's where you lose me. It, it, as long as you say, Hama I condemn Hamas and their methods, then we can have a conversation about protecting the Palestinian people. But they won't even say that. They just say, Israel's done so much worse. Whatever happens, happens. On the news. It's It's shocking. And uh, it's going to, however bad it is right now, it's going to get worse. Yeah, and that's what I said a couple of weeks ago. When well, you have the two wars at the same time, that's just like... I mean, it's pretty easy to predict at the beginning of a war that it's going to get worse before it's going to get better. We're like two weeks into this thing. So yeah, no disrespect. But yes, this thing's going and, to get a and, lot worse before it's going to get better. And it's Groundhoggy Day because this happens every six or seven years. Hamas does a horrible strike. Israel goes in and then Israel stops because everyone says you, you're just killing innocent. Like it, it's not like this is, it's, it's almost like a schedule. And you know that our friends, the arms manufacturers are just chomping at the bit. Champing. Champing at the bit because 
<laughs> no one mentions they launched like thousands of rockets. 2,200. But again, we and don't Israel know. Israel has I just this thing say, called the Iron Dome. I just want to say all this again. We do not know this. And that's one thing Coleman w- tried to hammer down. Like, we're being told that 2,200. Now, again, face value, you don't believe the media ever. So why would you believe that 2,200 rockets went into Israel? Yeah, and that's like saying, then they. I don't believe in the Iron Dome, and that's just for show. But I saw the Iron Dome working the other and day. And listen, the Israelis don't do anything for show. They're not like the Americans where nobody's going to test them. They get tested all the fucking time. When they do go, they on, are surrounded by their enemies. When they do um, go on the news, though, they're not like American officials. You know who we're talking about? Who use nicer words? They're like they're dogs. They're gonna die, dogs. We're gonna drag them the street, shoot them back, like. <laughs> Raising the temperature even more. But so you say the Iron Dome does work. I saw it vi- again. I, it's what you're fed by the media. I saw a video of it working perfectly the other day. The point I'm trying to make is if the Iron Dome does work, if it wasn't there, there'd be a lot more than a thousand Israelis dead. And it's like the, the missiles don't matter because they didn't get through. But if they are actually launching missiles, it could be 10,000 dead if they didn't have the Iron Dome. And that would be what much are, worse. What do they launch missiles from? You figure, like from trucks and shit. It's a great question. I think like that's why I, missile trucks. Like, do they have those kind no, of like arms? potato? Guns. That's why. No, that can't be. Right. Listen, come on. If you're talking about uh, missiles that are getting hit by the Iron Curtain or whatever, the Iron yeah, you're Dome. Not, you're talking about like a mortar. Are, those like are a homemade mili- mortar. Those are military missiles. They're coming from like the back some, of a truck, either Russian, old Russian ones or German. I don't even know American ones. Who fucking knows? You talk about Hamas rockets. I'm asking. They're homemade. So I mean, I feel like a lot the of those rockets are homemade. Therefore, the launch. A lot of those American rockets come off a ship. If I'm not mistaken. No, no. Like no. when Americans launch, I'm pretty oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. But also, like when you're out in like remember Iraq, the war, they had those like jeeps, and then the backs would open up, and it. Would- yeah, 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 yeah. That's what the Iron Domes look like. In any event, all the money. So I know. Yeah. All the money spent on the Iron Dome. Take that money to let's let's move on because this was the least interesting part of this whole. Um, and like Matt said, we have no idea what the fuck we're talking about on this one. Even more than you. The usual. money spent on Iron Dome could be the money spent on building the infrastructure and gas. Like it's just, it's just no, no. Those two things don't equate, though. You understand that, right? If the people in Gaza had those no are, reason to be upset, those aren't Israel's Israel only enemies. Israel would have uh, no reason to defend itself from Gaza. Yeah. It's not just from Gaza. That's not what the Iron Dome is. They're surrounded by enemies. Kamar is the problem. Yeah. The Iron Dome doesn't just protect them from the Gaza Strip. Well, I don't even think it does no, protect no, I, them from I'm the Gaza Strip. Literally. Isn't that inside the dome? No, uh, no I'm sure. It, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's supposed to protect any incoming projectile. A- anywho. Anywho. Sure, anywho. Listen, <clears throat> I go back to it. We do not know what's real. This thing's two weeks old. I'm dumb as fuck. So I'm not, I, you know... I don't want to see kids dying on either side. I know that for sure. I know that we get all three of us. I could hit the agreement button a thousand times on that. You sound like Hamzat. I think it's, I think it's, um, he it, also doesn't want to see children. dying. Yeah, we don't know what he said. After <laughs> yeah, that. Well, yeah. It's either if this has to happen every couple of years and just continues or it's like world war three. Well, world war three, let me Those, ask that you. Okay. Seems to be like the, is Hamas as big as like the German military was? Like World War Three? No, no. no. The concern like, say is Iran that Iran attacks the Israel, is, oh, okay. and it just yes. gets so out, the, the out of control. The concern is that the concern I think is that Hezbollah is that how, Hezbollah. Hezbollah. Hezbollah? They're a much bigger Hezbollah is a little bit yeah. They're a much bigger organization, and if they decide to jump in right now, then Israel would be stretched very thin. Well, and it, I think. Uh, like Kamar said too, if countries start taking sides, if Iran joins in, and then you know who knows what happens. I mean, they the Americans have put a clear fast. flag in the sand, so all those countries know that if you go to war, if you do this, you're going to war with the U.S. Yeah, they I mean, the U.S. has a fucking right now. The U.S. has a fleet of ships, like right outside of um, Israel, just ready to go. 
And that's clearly them saying, listen. I would have thought that um, Hamas wouldn't have thought they could beat the Israeli army. You know well, what I'm the, saying? That's the other thing. It's not just Hamas in there. There's other... I don't think they were trying to beat them, Simon. It was, yeah, the, it was the anniversary. They were just trying like to inflict pain. Yeah, thing. like, let's just fucking hurt them where it gets, right? Yeah. And then they have the hostages, which is not a good thing at all. I just won't let this go. Um, Simon's dying to get off this commercial. I just, like, there was other stuff they talked about. Come on, we're going to run out of time. You. They talked about talk aliens about right at the end. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and ancient civilizations. Like another problem, the they were talking island. about CRISPR choosing children. That's going to fuck people up even more. Well, CRISPR wasn't choosing the children. No, but couples, like certain uh, cultures and stuff, just make babies. Yeah. They're not so uh, judicious about the process. And that's just going to uh, dwindle that population Having more. Having a child, though, and I can tell you because I've had a child, um, the most stressful time of my life. 100% was waiting to see if that baby came out healthy. Mm -hmm. And if they could guarantee that, I just Well, that's what I'm saying is like is people it, is that bad? Like it, I'm not sure. It doesn't it's have it doesn't have to be well, we already We're played playing God, God anyway. No, no, I'm not, I'm, yeah. I'm not pushing I didn't say it was bad. Okay. No, I said, said it bad. very condescendingly. Oh, I'm, I'm forgive my tone. You're forgiven. Um I go back to it. I still think uh I agree with you, Simon. It doesn't have to be this crazy dystopian, like we're just killing 50 kids out of 51 and keeping the best one. Like it could just be like you're saying, hey, we can make sure that it comes out healthy. Yeah, and then I, the rest I wanna is, say it's it's not all or nothing. Like it's not either. It's um, most of the time it is. But yeah. with us, yeah, yeah, most of the time it is. Yeah, right? listen, so you're not wrong. The, that's the problem, yeah, I guess. I agree with you. Is that it goes from making sure your kid is healthy to then making sure your well, kid is better than the kid <laughs> yeah, next exactly, door. Because yeah. it'd know? be cool if you guys could add the piano. And what do you equate healthy? Like, is that being the best? When if you're not the best at something, then you're not, you know, there's something wrong with you. And since we have a limited knowledge of consciousness as it is, what if... By doing this, you also take out creativity and just make boring people. Mm -hmm. There's a lot to consider. Uh, lots of love for Kanye. Because unhappy people make some of the best art. Is that what you're driving at? Have some of the greatest ideas? No, but we, we're, we've gotten here through this random... This person's creative, and, this person And this isn't. is us inventing CRISPR. And like, why is that not part of evolution? It's just a much newer evolution, but we'll look back on it later on and it'll just be another step in making whatever humans Or become. there's an unintended right? consequence right? and it, it eliminates us. I mean, again, that's one, if it becomes sentient, yeah. No, just the process of making perfect people is... I don't know, like um, dogs, purebred. So you think they will start getting sick? Is that what you mean? I don't know. Uh, we just know so little. We're still purebred. We are. No, I guess well, purebred would be having sex with your passion. sister or something. <laughs> you are you. <laughs> what I meant was we're still human on human, you piece of shit. For now. For now. For now. Lots of love for Kanye. Well, no, it's true. Like once you start, you know, messing with the human genome, what's to stop you from like turning your dog into your real best friend? Well, no, like you said, you're like, well, I want my kid to be fast, like cheetah fast. So can we maybe get a yeah. cheetah in here that I yeah. could fuck and we can work that out? Yeah. That's but, interesting. And then you start just <clears throat> loving that sweet cheetah pussy. Uh, lots of love for Kanye. I mean, Joe always gives lots of love. But for but Kanye. Coleman Hughes also loved Kanye. Mm -hmm. Kanye, I'm really sorry. I, I Kanye, like when he's like he's into fashion and music and this. I'm I don't think Joe's aware, but there are like ten thousand Kanye Wests out there. But because they are not popular in one genre, they are not then popular in all the others. It's it's all a fucking scam. It's all horseshit. Like, don't Kanye was famous, and then he started designing clothes. And I'm sorry, I may not be like the hippest dude in the world. The shit he made was fucking ugly. Yeah, and people it bought into it hook, ugly, line, and sinker because we're dumb as shit. It's yeah. almost like if I was a betting man 
<laughs> it's almost like he was like, I'm going to make the ugliest shit and they're going to yeah. think it's cool because that's how cool I am. Yeah. Like that's how fucking ego of yeah. an egomaniac this guy is. I'm going to make slides that are so retarded that everybody's going to know that you're from outer space when you wear them. Like, you know what I'm saying? Coleman Hughes said he was the best rapper of all time. And I'm really sorry, but you, like I, that just isn't true. No, it's not true. Even me, even I know that. Like, uh, it just it, listen. You can say you could say Kanye West is my favorite rapper. I don't have a problem with you saying that. I'm not a Kanye fan. I have no problem with you saying I'm a big fan of Kanye. He's my favorite rapper. I'm cool with that. But like, I could name a rapper that is one of my favorites who I could also unequivocally say is not the best rapper of all time. You know what I mean? Like that. Those two worlds exist. Kanye West. Your is, favorite rapper doesn't have to be the best rapper. Precisely. Per, the, listen. Your favorite anything shouldn't be the best anything. Yeah, it doesn't have to be that way. Yeah. Look, my favorite sports team, the Vikings, terrible. Never win. Never winners, never once. 35 and nothing nice. Totally <laughs> <shit>. Positivity. <laughs> oh, I was just commenting that there was there's lots of love nothing. in the studio for Kanye West, and there was a prediction that he will have a comeback and have an album. I mean, he just had a leak that came out, but a listen, I like remember he did that uh, album that was all clean. I what his his gospel remember. phase? Yeah. Well, he Dr. J redid it, and uh, it's not clean. Maybe him and Will Smith will go on like a comeback tour. Poor Will. I just I, I, listen. I wish Kanye the best, and if you're a fan of Kanye's, like I don't, I'm not like I wish Kanye would go away. I don't care. I'm indifferent. I just don't. I think that people being it adds to this ridiculous egocentric asshole when people are like. He's an absolute genius. Like, listen, I'll tell you this. He makes great beats. He is an incredible beat maker. He is a, he became a decent rapper, but he is a superstar and nothing else. Like once you hit superstar status, you could shit on tinfoil and sell it as earrings and people will be like, this is the best thing ever. That's the fucking world we live in. Unfortunately, yeah, look at fucking prime. Yeah, there you but, go. Like, but if, <laughs> that's the if, perfect goddamn example. Yeah. It's a drink that doesn't do anything in a category of drinks, and it's number one. Like, it's so dumb. We live in bizarre. It's a world. popularity drink. It is hilarious. But if Kanye West puts out a number one hit, he, he will be one of the greatest rappers of all. Oh, have one of the most impressive rap careers of all time. Just what do you mean if he puts out a number like if he one comes hit? Back he comes from, back and has a song everyone's singing. It's just huge. I, I don't think that'll happen. I think he might be relegated to like Chris D'Elia. Come on, I'm not saying... Listen, I can sit here and tell you Kanye West is one of the biggest rap artists of all time. I'm not denying that either. All it would take was somebody like, let's say, Taylor Swift to do a duo with him and that would bring him back into... Uh, well, that's a weird one considering that he went I know, up on the fucking... I know. And music's weird how something will sound new or like fresh, so to speak. Because uh, Doja Cat has a new song out that is pretty uh, catchy. Walk on by... Bop, I was reading... Because I, I was bop, seeing what bop, she... Because she bop. says, fuck what I said, I'd rather be famous instead. And I think at one point she said she's done with fame. And anyways, the beat is two years old. Okay. The guy sent her that beat who he made two years ago and he says I when I made it, I knew it wasn't it wasn't ready and now it comes out and it sounds like a brand new song. Bitch, or, I said what I said. It's weird, eh? How music works. Um he's an atheist, uh preaching for peaceful coexistence. And I wonder I guess atheists like religious people, that's our community. And atheists are, are other atheists. Their community. I don't think atheists have a big like community. They don't. There's no like atheist church. There is. There is. But well, I don't think most their atheists go to it. But even then, religious people also have a community outside of their religion, which is their friends, which I'm sure atheists have as well. Like you act like atheists are just out there living alone in a room. Like, well, because I don't believe in God, I have a nothing. lot of religious people's friends come through like their church and shit. And think about going going back in time. When uh, it was harder to choose that as an option, or know there was like-minded people, that's how you would have like, met say your kinfolk. Religious people has has gone down since yeah. its peak. Whenever that was, there was a time where anyone who's alive believed in God. Okay, sure, yeah, probably. I mean, yes, it's definitely gone down for sure. 
the atheist has grown because you you aren't shunned from society. Whereas if you didn't pick something, I don't know. Coolest thing ever was talking about uh, the Empire State Building. Imagine there was a blimp service that you got downtown. Wouldn't that be so cool? Do you know how many elevators the uh, Empire State Building has? This is going to make you... We're living in a simulation for 2,000. Sure. Simon? Two. 75. Oh. My new thing is to go as low as possible with my guesses. Yeah, price, your price is writing it. Seven, but they're not all on the first floor, right? No, but either way, doesn't that like when you hear that, aren't you like, where, where do you put 75 elevators? That's crazy. I was thinking you could have like 10. Like uh, there's buildings downtown where you go in and you go in and there's 10 elevators, two on each side of a hall. Or like, yeah, I get it. Like four and four. Yeah. It's, and there's a big building. It's funny to me that they knew it was never going to work. The the blimp, blimp service. Blimp loading, but they had to do it anyways, just for appearance sake, you know? Well, it's like when you got to prove to your boss. Yeah. You know what I mean? Really you're like, it's sick. your money, but like, no, no. It's like, you're like, listen, this isn't going to work. And the boss like, but I want to do it. And you're like, okay, well, it's your money. Well, no, we'll no, do they it. wanted to do it. The boss wanted it done because it won him the race to be the tallest building. They knew it was never going to work. Gotcha. But I guess in order to like get the city to sign off on it, they had to like at least try it once yeah, or yeah. something. We couldn't land the blimp on the pointy end. Yeah. Sorry. Bad idea. <laughs> but that would be amazing. Well, I think they were metal blimps, though. Like dirigibles? Aren't those like the Led Zeppelins there? That Yeah, still, how are you going to dock it on the fucking... No, 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 it just wouldn't pop by hitting No, I understand, the, but the my point, point is you're not going to land it on a fucking... Yeah, no, it's a stupid idea. But it's very, like, Why futuristic is it Why is it in stupid? a way, you know? Why is it stupid? Oh, my God, I can think of so many reasons. First of all, you need, you're, you're landing the... So I'm taking a blimp from where to New York, and then I'm getting off downtown. You, yeah, you're going uh, ten buildings yeah, down. It's great, isn't it? Isn't it interesting? <laughs> that is even worse. Isn't it interesting that they thought that blimps or d whatever they were were going to be like a thing? Yes, these yes, air this palaces is where what people I'm just to say. hung out. That's kind of cool. But it's funny that you say air palaces because there wasn't really that much room for passengers. It was mostly room for gas. No, I saw pictures of it where it's like a ballroom in there. It was fucking huge. Yeah, that might have been a concept. Well, there's that too. What I'm saying is like there was that, like you could do two stories there, I guess, in that little thing. But above that was this massive fucking blimp full of gas. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how it worked. Either way. I stupid. think that'd be the coolest thing ever. Jameer Gibbs, if, Simon, you if, have him? If, I have him. If blimps Maybe. were somehow safe and viable as a, like an air ferry. An air air ferry. ferry. I like the sound of that. Dude, air ferry. Where air you could ferry. just take like a quick jaunt. You know how they tried to make like helicopters more? Yeah. Um, uh, no, Uber, I think they Uber are. Air. I think they are. Air ferry is very fucking interesting. Air ferry is very... Hairy. <laughs> the air ferry is very interesting. Oh, I forgot to talk about it. Not necessarily with the uh, conflict, but just news in general. What about this is a law? You can only report about any one story for an hour every 12 hours. <coughs> Say that again. You can't do two hours straight on the war in Israel or on I Trump see. or whatever. You have an hour in 12 hours because they just run the same stories over. Yeah. So you can do uh, six 10-minute chunks, put it out wherever you want because there's enough news going on in the world. And if someone really needs to just be... a, a consumed with this stuff it's all online so the news can't say well we need to get the information i mean out there. according to you nobody's watching the news anyways so what do you fucking care for the thirty thousand people that joe claims are watching Be cnn because people are watching the news and it puts them into a tizzy like they'll they'll show a story about uh yeah but simon's but they're getting that news from the internet they're not getting it from watching television because nobody fucking watches television anymore and according to joe cnn can't draw more than like twenty eight thousand viewers a day i think the other thing is that which cannot be right by the way well there has to be twenty eight thousand airports that are showing cnn i just i i believe there are still more people maybe i'm wrong i may i'm probably wrong dude that's like our show I, it just doesn't seem right i agree Anywho, Kumar, let's the, let's, the, pre that let's was, press on. The problem is they're millionaires. 
That's the problem that they're billionaires. Just a journalist talking to the camera and they're trying to keep, like we're all in this together. Uh, it's not is disingenuous. So like this, this guy is not a millionaire and he's a much more balanced journalist than the talking heads on the news. Uh, pause on AI is impossible. Impossible. There's another one of the things everyone have to be um, the in agreement. The only way we would pause on AI is if AI actually took over and all humans were like, oh, whoa, <laughs> we got to put, yeah. a, we gotta put a pause chill. on yeah. this. <laughs> no, yeah, and that's it'll be not too stopping. Late. The race has begun. Well, the point is it's like the U.S. does what they do. Everybody else isn't under the thumb or under their rules. You know, Anybody else who's actually in the race. Um, he then goes on to say he loves uh, Chad GPT yeah. as Four. a friend, almost, and says the hype is real. Okay. That's Chad GPT 4, where you have to spend $20 a month to have a buddy, I guess. Also, like, uh, Twitter's getting that way. You have to pay on Twitter, I think, to get any real traction. You have to pay for everything now. There is nothing. It's all, you have, there's nothing. You have to pay for everything. You don't have to pay for Joe Rogan. Touche. Give it time. Give it time, man. Um, he talked about a uh, mind reading tattoo. Why are you looking at me like that? Is this something that actually you guys existed? don't remember? I do remember. I, there was some sort when of you thing said that it, I was like, I don't think that was a thing that they can detect. Yes. It's like the first step to Neuralink, but not as evasive. Is that the idea? I don't remember. I remember Jamie pulling it up and being like, this can't be great. Well, it, it, it was sort of into that Mark of the Beast idea. And then, they, I mean, when they, Mark of the Beast. When they played the ESG <laughs> scanner uh, cartoon. Yeah. She was like yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. crushing on her coworker. Yeah. But uh, there's like, but you, you were stressed at the time of day and. You didn't get your report in, and the manager says, "Yeah, your supervisor all, all, asked you to come all in." All this um, now they know he has an accomplice. Big brother stuff, which probably to some degree is enforced somewhere, is happening, but it just doesn't. It seems so far from our ideas of freedom. It seems so 1984, but maybe that's what we have to become to be a peaceful people. Uh, mainstream media is ten minutes behind Twitter. Or X. Yeah, but that's a weird... Listen, when he said that, I was like, the idea of media was that they had... They were supposed to properly vet everything. You couldn't just go on... You, you couldn't just go on CNN and say whatever the fuck... But they don't do that. We know that. Well, dude, I don't know if you saw yesterday, but Portnoy had like... Uh, the well, New, sorry, go ahead. No, the New York Times, I guess, had some like reporter on the ground that uh, had some very problematic tweets. The New York Times reporter. They have a new. There, there's a New York Times like photographer slash reporter who's on the ground in Palestine. Oh, okay. Reporting, and they went. They went back and found some pretty heinous tweets. Anti-Semitic. Yeah, this guy's like Hitler was great. Hitler was the fucking man. So he didn't know about Hitler. Well, and then the New York Times. So Barstool hit up the New York Times and we're like, "Hey, what's going on?" And they were like. Oh, we, we addressed this years ago. Like we mentioned that we know he has some tweets from the past that are like, you know, not great, but he's going to try to keep an even keel when reporting on everything. Why does he still work? For well, them? that's it. I read this and I was like, holy shit. Why does he still work for them? I don't know. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I'd be weary of any. Well, their whole thing sign was he was a uh, outside contractor, right? Like he's a freelance. So just don't hire him. Again. I couldn't agree more, but I'm just saying that was what they were hiding behind was like, he's a freelance. Interesting. Yeah. Any, I'll send you the link. Any journalism that like um, celebrates government achievement, like he's on the side of the government, not critical, I'm weary of. If CNN, here, let, let's do this. If CNN is really only drawing 30,000 people They're not. a day, mm -hmm. mainstream media has no impact on anything anymore. Yeah. Why would did, why would we even talk about them? You, you know, like I, why I are they even the in past. the conversation? Yeah. That's why it can't be true. The fact that we are blaming things on them. No, like, it's, it's close to like three million people. Again, it's so like 
if I mean, it was in a country 3 million of 360 people, million people, it is it's so very low. inconsequential. We should never mention mainstream media again because they are fucking gone. They're not worth a breath. They, we can't blame them for anything. They're not doing anything. They're not changing anybody's mind because 3 million people out of 300 million people. It's 1%. It, who even gives a fuck? Well, I suppose. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. It why. just can't be right, is what I'm saying. Um, mainstream media must still hold a lot of sway. It has to be more than 3 million people. Well, that's just CNN and then all the other yeah, news. Yeah, because then if Fox has, let's say Fox has well, 5 Fox has million. More, yeah, Fox yeah has let's more. say Fox has 5 million. Now you're at 2% of the population, but your point still Again, remains. It's still not enough of the population. If, okay, it, 50% of the population doesn't watch the news. The kids, they just but, don't care. They just don't care. Simon, and now you have a hundred million people, but Simon, 150 million people. Then you're still forgetting that like, there's still people that read the newspaper, which is mains, which is own, which is the same conglomerate. There are still people that watch like MSNBC. There are still people there. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that most of um, the news you get, whether it be from uh, TikTok or from Instagram or from Facebook, it's all mainstream news, right? Yeah. Like we're in agreement there. Yeah. Those companies are just as uh, compromised as the big media companies. So it's, anyways, yeah. That's why I haven't been, listen, I, that's why I avoided this whole Israel thing because I just haven't been, I'm not trying to watch any war porn right now. I haven't been on Instagram. I don't watch the fucking news. I'm avoiding it, and I'm not avoiding it because I'm trying to be ignorant. I can't help. There's nothing I can do. No, you would just be buying into the fear porn of the whole. That's thing. what I'm well, saying. One of the things they keep saying I can do. is um, some people may find this disturbing. Did we I should all already? find it disturbing. No, you didn't. Do we want to find out who are the people that don't find yeah. it disturbing? It must be a small percentage yeah. of populations like. Yeah. Oh yeah, hospital bombing. Bombed bombing. Yeah. babies can't yeah. wait. Bring yeah. it on, Ingrid. Get the popcorn. Ingrid. You should say that. <laughs> um, UFOs. The floor is yours, Simon. <laughs> no, he, 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 it's the same thing. There's Joe thinks people are fucking with us, and uh, everyone else wants to believe, but thinks that there's some credibility to these reports, or they wouldn't exist at all. But w w was it us saying that ten percent of um, media is supposed to be wrong? No, and uh, I mean, the whole thing is, to, the the one correction I'll make on Joe is he keeps saying, well, all the sightings are over military bases because they have all the radars. That's like when it flies over your house, you have nothing to track it up there. Like that's, of course, that's where most of the um, credible sightings come from. It's because they have all the ways to see them. Was it on this podcast? You said Brazilians are way more into UFOs than... Yeah, their Even government is like uh, way more open to the idea, anyways. That like, who knows what their experience is? Do you think Brazilians know about Hitler? Listen, if an if a UFO had been Did to Brazil, you just ask if Brazilians knew about Hitler. Well, no, we were just talking yes. about other places that don't know. No, I think South yes. America knew about Hitler. Yeah, because, Argentina definitely knew well, about Hitler. That's well, a Argentina, different place, but <laughs> yes, but it's just south. It's on the border. Oh no, I, I would imagine there was a, a few that made it. A couple of Nazis went to yeah. Brazil too. You Let's know? be real here. Yeah. That's all I was saying. Um, what was I going to say? Fuck. Oh, if a UFO landed, crash landed in Brazil. They would have fucking jujitsu. They would have had one. Jujitsu. Yeah. I just wonder how big the craft would be. Actually, I bet an alien. Half the size of the moon. What craft? A craft. If if, if there was a well, if there like was a craft. The Tic Tac, I think, was like forty feet or something. Forty feet long. Yeah, you just wonder like where to keep food. Um. Oh, you're talking about like games. a giant ship. If, when, it, if it were I to be a ship, it would be that, that an alien has board games in case they get bored on their long trip. When they show those ships in the science fiction movies, they're always like miles long, right? Huh. They're huge. Mm -hmm. You would never even know you were on a ship. They're so big. Mm -hmm. The Death Star, say as an example. The Death Star, sure. Yeah. Not the Death Star, a, a Star Destroyer. The Death Star is Death Star's massive. 
No, but he's talking about the size. ship you yeah, see yeah. fly over. But, that just, uh, but if the moon 45 was... 45 million cruise ships. If the big. moon was a spaceship... Which we think it could which be. Which we think it could be, then there, there you that's go. a huge ship. And half of it's just covered in space debris and ice. Meteor. Space debris and ice. And white people. <laughs> <laughs> what bunch else did white. they talk about, Kamar? Uh, the there's a whole bunch about COVID and misinformation and stuff. Well, they talked about ancient civilizations, right? I don't remember that. Yeah, for a long time. For a long time. No, you do this. You do this. Come on. Did you, they not, did no, they what not? they talked about for a long time was Israel-Palestine. You didn't want to talk about that because you did this thing in your head. You know, where, <laughs> Emmett Morrison does a joke where he's like, I'm going to do some crowd work. And he'd be like, hey, well, shut out your job right now. And people yell out. He goes... Did I hear government? We <laughs> 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 you know, pushing along his own agenda. Like, well, I guess we should get to the Amazonian okay. conversation. You guys are both wrong. Cultures. I feel like you didn't even listen to this episode. He just told about Randall Carlson and the younger Dryas. And they talked about how things were made and they were so made. crazy that they were carrying the stones from so far away. So for We've get, done this a million stones. times. Cutting like, the stones. How, how they often? They referred to a scientist called Graham Hancock. Oh, wait, he's not a scientist. He's a, oh, wait, he's just a guy that makes up stories. No, we're just trying to discredit you. I'm not trying to discredit you. I just, there's nothing new. No. Did Coleman bring anything new to the table? No, they didn't talk about anything new. You are correct. Well, no. the one thing I will say, and then we can bring it back to Palestine, is most of the ancient is ruins and stuff are all in that area. No, they're all there's ancient didn't ruins. Did I say that like twenty yes, minutes you did. ago? But you're also wrong. You know this. There's ancient ruins all over the fucking no, place. No, I'm not saying there are, but there are a lot of is, wild ones there. There's a lot of religious ones there for sure. No, no, no. They have some crazy shit in. Uh, Iraq, uh, yeah, Syria. Yeah, yeah. Me old Mesopotamia for sure. Yeah. South America. But there are, there are crazy things. This is you, the also, you, you always say this. We don't know what we haven't found. And I'm telling you, everywhere <laughs> where people live right now, there are crazy things. We have crazy things in Ontario. We have, cra like, everywhere, man. But we don't know. There were people history. living everywhere, and these people were doing a different kind of architecture using. Big stones. Big stones. And that was the other thing Joe was wrong about. He said, oh, they were only doing this stuff in Africa. And that's not true. In Because he said in Europe, nobody was doing megalithic building. And that's simply not true. It's like we're there species with amnesia. That's so, simply not true. So many megalithic sites all over Europe. And what's crazy about Europe, it's such a small little place. So many megalithic sites. It's true. It's true. I agree with you. What do you want that's, me to say? That's I, it. I mean, okay. okay. If you guys don't want to partake in the conversation, there's nothing I can do. It's like fucking pulling teeth. Oh, no, well, but I think no, the listeners. There's are no. Just... It's not that the, Simon. It's that nothing new was brought to the table. Yeah, it's fine. We, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Even when I bring something new to the table, you're like, "Oh, that's great." But you don't. You're Let, like, "I let's, this podcast. Let's talk I about listen, let's this, talk about war and violence." Yeah, that's, that's, that's all the only thing you can find in age of civilization is the deed for Palestine. <laughs> and then finally one's from <laughs> it's all over it's ours get out of here it probably belongs to a race of people who are no longer on this earth or it's in the vatican the deed no i'm saying even if oh, it the was, answers even if it was deeded to somebody yeah it would have been some civilization that's no longer here Oh, that's what I was going to say. If Israel really wanted to mess up, I'd just flood Palestine or Gaza with fentanyl. See how good that works here. And the uh, no more buildings blowing up. No? i give this one a three. I would give this one a 3.25. Come on. Uh, I'm going to give it a 3.1. Look at that. Close, very close. All right, well, that's an episode. If you made it this far, thank you so much. Maybe you're willing to go, hey, I hate when you guys do this. Fucking sit down. The show isn't I'm over. Fine, go. Get letting my ears are sweating. Whatever, fuck. If you made it this far, thank you so much. Maybe you're willing to go a step further. We have a Patreon. If you want to support the show, you can do so for as little as $5 a month. Head over to patreon.com slash J-R-E-E podcast. That's it. That's all I'm going to do. I'm not going to push anything else on you. I hope you have a great week. I hope you enjoy your weekend. And as usual, keep your...
eyes open.